The servant informs his master that Lady Karina has come to him. Leopold is his bride. Hearing this, Lord Zenthar, Duke Milian Festalio was very surprised, because the wedding was scheduled only in a year. Butler Fung says that the lady has come a long way, and it will be better if the gentleman comes out and meets her. Coming out of her room, Zentar screams and says that this is bad manners. And what is she thinking about? Because they are engaged, and he does not understand how a lady can show up willfully without a single letter. The gentleman thinks that in such a tense time, when winter is just around the corner, he needs to stock up on food supplies and prepare to face the demonic beasts. Opening the door, the young master says that it will be difficult to break off the engagement. Suddenly, he hears a woman's voice, who says that breaking off the engagement is not difficult. The surprised duke asks if she heard everything, and offers to repeat only what she just said. The young lady says that she will break off her engagement to him in exchange for the provision of lodgings here for a period of six to ten months. The surprised gentleman asks if the lady is sane. Karina says that it is clear that she is in her right mind, since she does not insist on living on a specific estate, and a side outbuilding will be enough for her. She reports that she brought the documents to break the engagement with her and shows them torn and old. The black-haired gentleman asks if the county is in trouble. After all, he judges her by her appearance. The young master wonders where the rest of her things are. Karina reports that she does not have anything with her, since she was afraid that she would get into trouble along the way, and therefore did not intentionally arrive easily. The gentleman asks how she got here. The lady replies that first she came for money on a stagecoach, then she got off at a certain place and walked. Then she got into the cart and joined a group of traders. The young master is wondering when the lady left. The girl replies that two months ago. Hearing this, the duke says that she never contacted him during this time. However, the important thing is that noble women make such a difficult journey alone, because there should be a limit to ignorance of generally accepted norms in the world. Karina smiled and said that perhaps this is her first and last trip. After all, she wanted to achieve something at least once, on her own, by taking independent steps. Hearing this, the gentleman began to think, after all, a noblewoman could not make such reckless journeys twice. Meanwhile, the lady looked at him and asks if she can stop here. The duke wonders what will happen if he says no. Hearing this, Karina says that she has a backup plan to become an assistant to merchants and carry out small tasks and return because she has no alternative. A guy with black hair wonders if this girl is the same one she had during the engagement. After all, he didn't expect her to be with Mink. Karina smiled and looked at the guy and said that his lordship would not refuse her. The duke asks why she thinks that. The lady replies that she knows that the gentleman hates her, and she knows this very well. Karina shows the guy the documents to break the engagement, which she has already signed. Seeing them, the duke suggests they go inside first. Hearing this, the lady thanks him with pleasure and says that she promises that she will live here as if she were not there at all. Therefore, if one day she disappears, then let him think that she has returned back. The girl invites the gentleman to imagine that an annoying callus like her just fell off. The young master tells Fen to find a free room for the lady. Karina thinks that she started her life on the estate of her fiancé, who hated her with all his heart. The man turns to Leah and says that today she has a healthy complexion. The girl replies that it's all thanks to her mom and dad, who give her medicinal herbs every day. Sitting next to the girl, the boy says that her food is terribly bitter. The woman with red hair explains that Leah is in poor health, and she must eat this food, regardless of the taste. The guy says that he even bought a gift for their poor Leah. Hearing this, Fell screams and says that this is not fair and asks if he also has a gift. Infric answers that he also bought him something. Karina thinks that you are acting. She was curious why only her hair is a dull brown color. After all, they were all born from the same mother and raised in the same house. However, she was nothing like her brothers and sister. The young lady later found out that she had inherited her hair from one of her great-grandmothers or great-grandfathers. But she finished her meal and therefore left them first. When Karina left the table, she thought that no one even paid attention to her. However, the girl calms herself down and thinks that everything is fine, because now it doesn't matter since she was not warned that her condition would deteriorate so rapidly. A few days ago, the girl was informed that there was bad news. After all, the fact is that her organs perform at most half of their functions. The doctor says he is amazed that she is still on her feet. And being healthy, she suddenly found herself in such a serious condition. 
the doctor admits that this is most likely a disease of art. However, among artists there are people who have outstanding talents and perform so-called miracles. Sometimes, there are cases when the cost of displaying talent is vitality. The doctor asks the girl if she's performing miracles. Karina agrees with him. The doctor says that every time she uses the ability, her body's condition worsens. Since she did not undergo a medical examination, and if she had known about her illness earlier, it would not have come to this. He asks if Lady told her family about her illness. Karina says her family still doesn't know anything, but she tried to tell them, but they didn't listen. As a result, the girl remained silent out of stupid pride and stubbornness. Because in fact, she was not unloved. And parents always tried to be fair because some were sick, some were young, other children needed more care. The lady thinks that she inevitably had to make a choice in their favor. And besides, she was not the youngest in the family. After all, parental attention to her, quiet and obedient in nature, was no more than a grain of sand. Karina thought that if she directly told her family about her problems now, they would definitely look at her. She understands that if she is tormented by sincere doubts, whether they are with her or just observing the ability of the caller, it will be a miracle. Doctor says Lady said she has anemia, vomiting, and hemoptysis. A man in a white coat reports that it is extremely difficult for him to talk about this, but at best a year. After all, the body will not be able to properly absorb food and therefore will gradually weaken. And to be honest, even a year is too long. Karina is interested in whether it is possible for her to be cured. The doctor says no, as far as he knows, no way has been found. However, perhaps there is a method to extend her life, and if she is interested, she can come again. Looking at the window, the young lady saw white doves and thought that it would be nice if she had wings. However, the girl understands that she is dying and would like to try everything she wants before she dies. The lady thought that she did not want to fake a smile because she did not want to act as if she could fix everything alone. She doesn't want to look like she'll give in on anything. However, if her family finds out how they look at her, they will see Karina as an extra problem. The girl understands that this will completely break her and decides not to tell her family anything about her illness and just leave. Karina Ponomate that at most she had a year left, and if she left home, then she would have nowhere to go and nothing to do. The lady wants to find a man who looks at her with a clear gaze and does not care whether he loves or hates her. After all, the main thing is that his eyes reflect she as she is. At this time, the gentleman asks the lady why she is shaking from side to side, and he doesn't understand if there is no motivation, then why came out. Karina, without taking anything with her, moved on her own feet and reflects on the fact that she should have taken something with her. The lady was thinking that she needed to change gold coins, pick up a simple change of clothes, take beef jerky, water, and prepare documents for breaking the engagement. Having thought about all this, Karina understood that she would have to look for a doctor again. The girl remembers that she was not at the morning meal, and no one came to see her. She understands that she did not talk about her illness. However, she is still offended. The girl understands that she has no more than a week to prepare, and therefore she needs to do everything in advance. When Karina was at the ball, two girls approached her and asked if she knew Mr. Infrick since they had recently seen her talking to him. The lady replies that she knows him because he is her brother. Unfamiliar girls say that they are embarrassed because he is just a delightful man. The Count and his wife are also good, but what's more important is how famous their children are. Mr. Infrick Leopold is a prominent official in society, and they say that he is quite worthy to become the head of the county, even now. The unfamiliar girl says that this is for sure, because she recently heard how some lady again sent him a letter declaring her love. The woman says that Mr. Fertile Leopold is a man, because no one can resist his lively, friendly character. However, when it comes to the Leopold family, one cannot help but think of the lady, Avelia Leopold. Since she naturally has wavy, luxurious hair, shining like precious stones, blue like her eyes, when a woman saw her, she couldn't help but think how charming she was. After all, this girl always hangs around in the center of secular society. Hearing this, the other woman replies that the county treats her with great trepidation because she has a weak body. The unfamiliar lady claims that there is another lady in the county, which is unremarkable and accompanies them everywhere. Looking at herself in the mirror, Karina thought that she was not a remarkable lady. She heard such rumors about herself, got ready that same day, and simply left home from the ball. 
and after that, she was scolded for this. Karina remembers that then she saw a guy with green hair and asked how he was doing. Nickton is informed that he is going to Leah. After all, today is the day of Mrs. Avelia's medical examination. The lady understands funny that once in her heart, her feelings for this man came together. Perhaps, since Avelia turned out to be similar to his younger sister, who died in early childhood. After all, Nickton's gaze was always riveted on her, and she could only refuse her hopeless love. The guy with green hair, looking at Karina, says that her complexion is unhealthy and asks if she feels good. The lady heard this and thought since when was he interested in this and said that she just didn't get enough sleep. Nickton reports that he could examine her together with Mrs. Avelia. However, the lady says everything is fine. Suddenly, her younger sister runs up to Karina and hugs her. The man of the body makes a remark that it is dangerous to suddenly jump on his sister. Leah asks her sister where she is going. The girl replies that she needs to go to one place and says that Avelia should not play around on the stairs. However, the girl claims that she believed that her sister would catch her. Karina suggests to her sister that Nickton should examine her, because this way she will get better sooner. The girl replies that all the guy does is grumble, and she actually feels much better, and so she invites her sister to play with her. The young lady asks her sister if she wants Nickton to go through such a journey in vain. Hearing this, this guy with green hair says that he is annoyed to hear such words because he received the Count's order. That is, that Mrs. Karina needs to go about her business. And he turns to the girl, asks if she is good, and that's why she won't be capricious. Leah asks her sister if she has fun going outside every day. Avelia was particularly obsessed with Karina. And therefore, during her illness, the girl had to be with her. Karina realized that the invitation to a tea party, which she could not attend, was becoming more and more. And naturally, this led to the fact that she was interested in the question of why she couldn't have at least a little fun. She never made a single close friend, and this happened every time. The young lady recalls that her mother asked her forgiveness for being forced to leave urgently, since Infric fell from his horse and he could have been seriously injured. Karina says it's her birthday and asks where Dad is. Mom explains that her father went to the academy ahead of her and the butler has a birthday present. The girl remembers the first time she saw her younger brother and sister, and the mother, lying down after giving birth, says that she is now an older sister, and she needs to take good care of her brother or sister. After a while, Karina screams for his brother to return the toy that her mother sewed for her birthday. When the girl took her brother's toy away, her mother heard it, because he was small and began to scream a lot. The woman with red hair claims that she is an older sister, and she should not behave like that. Karina explains that she didn't do anything because it was Ferdin who took her item. However, Mom insists that she is the eldest and should have given in. After all, for the younger ones, she is like an adult, and suggests that she try not to set a bad example and give the toy to her younger brother. Mom invites her daughter to be an obedient girl. Because she is an adult, and she can tell her father about this story, and he will scold Karina again. A woman with red hair tells the girl not to act like a child. Approaching her mother, Karina reports that she does not feel well and is dizzy. The woman with red hair tasted her body and says that she is hot. She explains that Avelia has a fever, and now a doctor is looking after her, and as soon as he finishes, she will ask him to examine her daughter. Meanwhile, her mother offers. Take her to the room. The butler tells Mom that the doctor asks her to come and talk about Mrs. Avelia. However, the woman replies that she heard and says that she will come over in a few minutes. Mom asks Karina for forgiveness and says that she will call the maid and invites her daughter to go to her room and rest, since she will look at her as soon as she finishes with her chores. The woman says that she is a big girl and can be alone in her room. Hearing this, the little lady thought that her mother would not carry her and was very disappointed. She remembers the words her mother said that she was healthy. After all, her younger sister's illness is much more serious, and she should treat this with understanding. Karina thought that when she was obedient, she tolerated her, she was praised, and she always had to give in to her sick younger sister and her troublemaking younger brother. And always give in to your older brother who lives somewhere far away. The girl remembers that she was deprived of the affection of her parents, and in the end, she closed her heart. By the age of ten, she decided to expect nothing more from them. However, instead, she found a new hobby of drawing and not realizing that this was called a miracle. Karina created paintings filled with life, receiving real satisfaction. 
While drawing butterflies, she realized that they seemed to be alive and thereby wanted to show off to her mom and dad, inviting them to look at her drawing. However, her parents don't seem to hear her and say that Infric took first place in the sword competition and it looks like he will graduate from the academy early. Karina again invites her mother to look at her drawing and you didn't even look at it. The woman with red hair says that's not bad. After all, she thinks that Infric will return this weekend and suggests organizing a small reception. Mom says that Avelia has been feeling well lately, and it just happened to be a good coincidence. Hearing this, Karina sadly thought about why they never looked at her even once. Suddenly the girl heard her name called and asked if she had taken the thing lying on the table. Karina replies that she didn't take anything, but her mother, screaming, says that she shouldn't lie, and how did she end up in Avelia's hands? The woman with red hair claims that she warned that it was dangerous, and the girl hasn't listened to her at all since she became an older sister. Mom says that Karina upsets her all the time. At that time, the young lady thought in surprise that her words would not reach her mother's mind, and Karina understands that it is better for her to apologize and say that next time, this will not happen again. Dad says Infric's graduation ceremony is tomorrow, and he thought that they should postpone his birthday party. He asks Karina if she minds. The girl thought that her paintings did not matter compared to the outstanding abilities of her older brother, whom everyone praised. The lady says that even if she celebrates her birthday later, there will be no less treats and gifts. Mom suggests Karina postpone her tea party because Avelia is not feeling well. Since her younger sister is sick, she is obliged to understand her because she is a strong girl. Karina Segda agreed with the parents and said that everything was fine. The girl thought that the more often she agreed with her parents, the more she sought solace in her paintings. And one day, I realized that if you put all your strength and soul into creativity, it gives it life. The lady painted a short sketch for one hour and a long one for a day. Numerous paintings came to life and quickly disappeared. Instead of a family indifferent to her, she preferred creations with her own hands, animated images that consoled her in moments of sadness, like pets, and listened to her stories like true friends. This is how Karina got into this endless cycle from which she cannot get out. The lady tells her little sister to see her later and thought she was going to throw up. Leah screams after Karina so that she can buy her something tasty at the market because she wants to try the kebabs and juice. The young lady tells her sister that she will buy and heard this Leah wishes her sister a good journey. Walking along the path, Karina understood that it was terrible to envy her younger sister. The doctor sees the girl. He asks in surprise whether she wanted to live in one day. Hearing this, the lady says no, but she needs medicine. The surprised doctor does not understand what medicine she is talking about. The lady explains that she needs medicine to leave this place because she has never been the master of her life and she does not want this to continue until the very end. The doctor asks where she intends to go. The young lady replies that she is in Zenthar on the outskirts of the server. Hearing this, the man in a white coat says that it would be better if she simply said that she was going to the next world, and then he would prepare a medicine for her that would kill instantly. The doctor says that if she came to ask to kill her, then he doesn't do that and waves his hand for her to leave. However, the girl objects and says that this is not exactly what she meant. Karina asks if it is possible to get there safely without dying, because she planned to spend two months traveling, including breaks for thorough rest in hotels once a week for two days. The doctor heard this and thought that this was not an easy task. A man in a white coat asks why the North, since this is the only refuge where he can stay. He claims that it is extremely dangerous there, and even more so, winter will come in two months. Karina. They don't understand what the problem is, because in any case, she will be sitting in the room. The doctor asks what exactly the lady wants. At this time, Karina thought about being looked at as a child who knew nothing about life. She says that the main thing for her is not to die. It is unclear where, having fallen unconscious along the road. The man asks when she will leave, and the girl replies that in a week. The doctor says he has very little time. After all, with the vital force flowing out of his body due to the illness of art, he cannot do anything fundamental. However, it may slow down its leakage for a short time. The man in the white coat says that he will make the medicine for exactly two months, and as soon as she stops taking it, her condition will sharply worsen. Hearing this, the lady screams with delight that this is enough for her. Karina offers the doctor money, and when he sees it, 
He says that it's a fortune, and doesn't understand why give so much after all, who does that anyway? The young lady claims that he can consider this a worthy payment for the medicine because of all his work. After all, she has nowhere to spend it anyway. The girl reports that she will visit him in six days. The doctor thought that this lady was so young and was ready to give up. And he doesn't understand what kind of life she lived if she looks so carefree. Karina thinks that having received the medicine, she will be able to leave calmly. Suddenly the girl smelled a delicious smell. And the woman invites her to try the kebabs. After which she will lick her fingers, and having tried them, will not be able to tear herself away. The lady remembers her sister's words that she wants to try, and Karina asks me to pack two pieces of kebabs for her. The girl again remembers her little sister's words that she said that it was fun for her to go outside every day. Karina understands that her younger sister is not telling her this out of malice, and that she loves her. However, the girl understands that she shouldn't worry about this, and especially not for the first time. Sister Avelia and Brother Fedrin appear, little and younger than her, and in any case, she must understand them and give in. The lady thought that kebabs would be suitable as a snack before dinner. Arriving home, Karina was met by her brother Fedrin, who asked where she had been and what smelled so delicious in her hands. He says that it's hard for his sister and offers to carry it himself. Hearing this, the young lady thought that it was only at such moments that she was respected. The girl suggests that Fedrin go and have fun with his sister, since she asked to buy her. The younger brother thanked Karina. The girl thought that she was very tired, and so he'll go and close his eyes for a while. Lying in bed, the main character hears screams that her name is being called. When she opened her eyes, she saw her father and did not understand what he was doing in her room. Her father asks if Karina brought street food for Avelia. The girl replies that she was leaving the estate, and hearing this, the father tells her not to say that she didn't know that her younger sister shouldn't be fed anything. Karina didn't understand why they came to her room after so much time. After all, she was just fulfilling Avelia's request. The surprised lady asks what happened. The father, screaming, asks her if she thinks such food is suitable for her sister. He reports that Avelia vomited and became dehydrated, and this is all because of a frivolous attitude towards his younger sister. Mom says that father is right because Karina is now an adult and she doesn't understand why someone could do this irresponsibly. Karina tried to explain that it was Leah who asked her. However, upon hearing this, the father objects and, screaming, says that he does not want to hear any excuses. The main character thought about what she needed to endure and, as usual, apologize, because they are just worried about Avelia and therefore are not looking for someone to blame. The girl does not understand why she is always made to blame. Father asks if she said something, Karina plucks up courage and asks what they want from her and how long she must endure. The girl thought that she still had a whole year until the day of her death, and only then will it reach them. However, the surprised father says that she allows herself. Karina explains that she bought food for her sister because Avelia asked her to do so. The lady offers to conduct educational conversations with her and explain to her younger sister that such food is contraindicated for her because it is harmful to her health. The father says that he cannot believe how much Karina does not care about her sister. The girl replies that she believed that Avelia was fine and therefore complied with her request. This is the time when the mother asks her daughter in what tone she speaks to her father. The girl says that she was only defending herself, without saying anything that would go beyond the bounds of decency. The father suggests that when she tolerates unfamiliar food, consult a family doctor. The daughter does not understand what this means because Ferdin and she were not poisoned, and so she had no doubt that everything would be fine. Karina claims that next time she promises to be more vigilant and invites her father to carefully look after Avelia. Hearing this, the father agrees and tells her to be more careful in future. Father claims that her sister has not been healthy since birth and asks if Karina remembers this. However, he is not pleased to remind her that she is considered a healthy girl compared to her younger sister. Hearing this, Karina agrees with him and thought that this is damn health, and their family is healthy, not only her. Infric and Ferdin are healthy too. However, she does not understand why only she is asked to sacrifice herself. After all, as if being born healthy is considered some kind of crime, Mom says her dad was upset because Leah passed out. She again invites Karina to treat them with understanding. Mom wonders if their words hurt her feelings. Karina asks if there is anything else they want to tell her. However, the father does not understand what she means. 
The girl was surprised, because it was amazing for her, since they both remember where her room is, and in recent years, they have never visited her. Karina says that she thought they forgot. The girl asks to tell Avelia that she regrets her actions, and he invites her parents to leave her to rest. When she was left alone in the room, she thought that it was not her fault, and that everything would be fine with her younger sister. The girl recalls dehydration, because she recently also had such symptoms. And she understands that this is all normal, because it's nothing to worry about. Karina spent the whole night drawing and drew a fairy with beautiful blonde hair. The girl thought that she would, as always, surrender to oblivion, turning to the paintings. She understands that this is taking her life and will never let them out of her hands. After all, it's all hers. Seeing Mrs. Karina, the maid reports that she has come down to eat for the first time in two days. And when her younger brother and sister saw her, they immediately hugged her. Fredrin asks for forgiveness because of the day before yesterday. Avelia says that she was wrong and will no longer ask her to buy kebab. Hearing this, Karina thought that everyone would be very happy, since today was the last time. Sitting at the table, the main character thought that she could only eat salad. Suddenly, her father announces that her birthday is in two years. Hearing this, the young lady agrees with her father. And at that time, I thought that she had forgotten about it. All. The father reports that Infric's vacation falls around this time and he was thinking of having a family picnic. He asks if her birthday party can be postponed. The main character tells them to do as they please, and she reports that she will not be able to attend the picnic because she has business. Hearing this, the father is surprised and asks if her urgent matter is important since she cannot spend time with her family. Karina asks for forgiveness and says that they can have fun without her. Since she has finished her meal, she announces that she is going to go to her room. Arriving in my room, the girl thought that she would no longer be offended. After all, this birthday is probably the last. The main character does not understand why her father asks as if her consent is taken for granted, and without expressing a single desire. The girl understands that even her last memories of her family will remain terrible. The main character believed that since they were her family, she should say at least a few words goodbye but in the end she left them only a one-line letter. At this time, while in the Duke's mansion, the main character thought that, thank God, he did not throw her out. On the eve, the Duke told Fenn to find a free room and invited the girl to take a bath and then talk to her. Sitting in the bathroom, the main character thought that there were only three pills left of the medicine. She remembers the words of the doctor, who told her that he had given enough medicine, and even if there were three pills left, she should stop taking it. After three days without the medicine, a slight fever will begin, and weakness will suddenly overwhelm the body, and then the condition will sharply worsen. The girl thought that around tonight, she would suddenly get worse. The main character understood that due to the high temperature, it would be completely unbearable, and she must take one pill every two days. However, she should not resist the urge to sleep, because this proves that the body consumes energy. She thought that if she had a grandfather, she would feel the same way. However, the journey was difficult, but certainly enjoyable, and she understands that she only has a year left to live, and therefore she wants to live it the way she wishes. Entering the office, Karina smelled ink and paper, and I thought that the state of the office showed the dryness of its owner. The main character thought that the gentleman was probably very busy, but she fell out of the blue for him, and she was very sorry. The young master invites the girl to sit down and tell her why she came to his estate. I heard this. This Karina was surprised and asked if it was necessary to tell. The gentleman says that if she is going to live in his house, she must first take the trouble to explain. He asks the girl if she had a fight with her family. The main character replies that you can say so. The Duke says that as he understands, since the girl traveled to the duchy for two months, she seriously intends to stay here. He wonders if there was such a big quarrel. Karina thought that he was both right and wrong because she wanted to meet her end in a peaceful place and so I decided to move away from my family. The main character thought that she once imagined how they would regret everything if she died. The girl understood that these were all childish and naive thoughts, and every person sometimes needs time to cool his head. The young master says that now is not the right time, because winter is coming, and the most stressful period in the duchy, and he simply will not have time to worry about her. Upon hearing this girl smiled and said that this was great. At this time, Mr. didn't understand what this short lady was saying. However, it is much more important to him. Karina explains that when it will be better for her to move into the outbuilding, because he doesn't use it anyway. 
However, she has been given a room next to hers and his, and she believes that it will be inconvenient for both of them to constantly bump into each other. The Duke thought that he was again interested in the question of whether this was exactly the woman he knew. After all, during the engagement, she seemed completely different to him. The gentleman says that the outbuilding needs to be put in order. After all, a lot of people sang there. He claims that cleaning goes without saying, but he still needs to move the necessary things and find a servant. The main character says that the main thing for her is that there is fire and warm water, because everything else is not important, and she doesn't need a maid either. The young master says that if everything is so normal for her, then she can move into the outbuilding at any time and tells Fen to prepare everything. However, he orders her not to stick her head out of the estate. The man says that winter in the north is harsher than in the south, and it is unknown where and when the demonic beast will appear. Having heard this, Karina says that in any case there is no need for her to go out, because now she can go, and she would like to go to the outbuilding to rest. The gentleman suggests doing what is most comfortable for her. The girl thanks him for the warm welcome, but the man replies that he did not welcome him and simply cannot kick her out. Leaving the room and standing near the door, the girl asks for forgiveness, because she acted willfully. Walking down the corridor, she felt dizzy. Arriving in her room, the girl felt cold, and she thought that while she was able to move, she would go get a jug of water and a towel to put on her forehead. Entering the corridor, she thought that the kitchen was on that side, since this place was larger than the Leopold family estate and easy to navigate. Suddenly, the main character heard someone calling her and was very scared. Suddenly, a gentleman appeared in front of her, wondering why she was not sleeping early in the morning. However, the girl does not know what to answer and asks why he was here. Hearing this, the black-haired guy thought about not saying that his feet themselves brought him here because he was worried. The Duke says that it seems to him that the temperature regulator of the outbuilding is broken, and therefore he went out to check and at the same time ventilate himself. However, he says that he is interested in the question that my lady is hiding something, and he invites her to talk if there is a problem. Suddenly the Duke grabs the girl's hand, and she feels that her breathing is ragged and her cheeks are burning, and not the same as before, the trembling voice when answering. The guy claims that she has a fever. Karina replies that everything is fine, because she will feel better if she rests a little. The Duke says that he should have immediately guessed that she was overtired from the long journey. The young master says that if she feels bad, then let her tell him about it and not tolerate it. After all, patience is the act of stupid mice. He says that she doesn't need to be a hero and hide the pain, because this only brings problems for her and those around her. Go ahead. If she doesn't want to add more work to anyone, then let her talk about everything honestly. The guy asks if she admits her guilt. At first, the girl agrees with him, but however, she thought about why he even interrogated her in the middle of the night. Karina tries to explain something to him, but Duke suddenly puts his palm in front of her and asks how many fingers she can see. Looking at his hand, the lady thought that the finger could not be six, because she had the feeling that he was only showing two. The main character says that she sees three fingers and thought that she guessed correctly. Suddenly the Duke takes her in his arms and says that she is causing him nothing but trouble. The gentleman says that this place is not intended for the sick, and he will return her to the main estate where she will rest. The guy reports that he understands that she doesn't like her, but nevertheless suggests that the girl not make him a hard-hearted person. The young master says that he will call a man who will take care of the lady and tells her not to worry. Hearing this, the girl says that he should not call the doctor. The guy invites her to rest first, and sitting near the guest's bed, the gentleman thought that she was hiding something. Two months later, the maid informs the owner that Mrs. Karina has disappeared. The man says that she sometimes went out with weapons on business, but without warning in advance. However, he does not understand why she is panicking out of the blue. The maid apologizes and says, since today she went to clean her mistress's room and found a letter on the table which says that she is leaving. You are traveling. Hearing this, the gentleman was surprised. But his wife asks what is wrong with the letter. He is confused. Read the letter and was surprised that her daughter had left. You were traveling and at the same time she didn't say a word to anyone. The father asks the maid when she last saw Karina. The maid reports that she saw her leaving two days ago. The man asks if she saw her last night. However, the maid says that she does not remember them colliding. The father asks the younger children if they have seen Karina. Avelia says that Karina was not in the room, and therefore she thought that sister had gone for a walk to the market. 
the youngest son cries out that he, too, has not seen his sister in recent days. Infrick says that she was probably offended that her birthday and the picnic overlapped. He says he should have chosen another day. The guy remembers that he talked to his sister and asked her to tell her if there was something wrong. And he told her not to forget that her father and mother loved her. Karina answered him that she is also their child. Somewhere deep down in her soul, she understands that they love her. And she said the proverb that no matter what finger you bite, it hurts your entire hand. But this does not apply to her. The mother claims that her daughter left a piece of paper for last, knowing full well that they would worry about her. And she says that if she didn't want the picnic so badly, she could have just said so. The older brother says that in any case, Karina has not gone far. He orders his servant to send people to find out where his sister could have gone. A woman with red hair is interested in the question of how much money is missing. The maid says that if you add up yesterday and today, it comes out to approximately two gold pieces. Infrick claims that she certainly couldn't have gone far. With this money, Karina will last a week or two at most, and as soon as she returns, he will properly reprimand her. Mom claims that she hopes that nothing bad will happen, dear. The father is furious and says that his daughter is unscrupulous and has repaid her parents with black ingratitude. Since she ran away from home, she forgot how hard her privileged life cost them. The man says that he needs to remind his daughter about this. The next day, in his office, the father screams in rage that he does not understand what these children's antics are and what his daughter was thinking. After all, insults are insults, but this is too much. Hearing the screams, a woman with red hair opens the door and asks her husband if he is okay. The man reports that Karina has left the southern lands. Hearing this, the woman was surprised. She doesn't understand what they should do now. The gentleman reports that the trail ends. The last time she was seen was when she was riding alone in a carriage towards the capital. The father thinks that by putting himself in Karina's place, he roughly understands her feelings. But he doesn't understand how she came up with such a crazy plan, and for him, it's unthinkable. The woman with red hair says, what if she is in trouble, and offers to send more people to bring her back. The Duke says that there is no point in forcibly returning her, since she is so indifferent to her home, then let her do what she wants. The father says that she left the estate of her own free will and will not approach the threshold until she bows her head and asks for forgiveness. Carlos tells the servant to tell his pursuers to continue searching because he doesn't care. How much money will it require? The woman says that she understands that this time Karina acted recklessly. After all, she was just upset and you shouldn't be so angry with her. The gentleman tells the woman not to stand up for her. After all, who in their right mind would run away from home because of something that happened to her at her birthday party? He claims that bad rumors are ruining his reputation, and he understands that Karina is not that strong and will return as soon as he feels that things are bad. The father asks his wife how Leah is feeling and if she is lonely, because she fell asleep and woke up with Karina's name on her lips. The woman says that her daughter constantly looks sadly into Karina's rooms, and she doesn't understand what to say. After all, she is better than her crazy sister. The woman with red hair says that Avelia acts like a child, but is quite thoughtful, and she believes that Karina also had a reason to do this. The father does not understand what his daughter was deprived of, and maybe it's personal money or desired gifts. He says that she had nothing to complain about, but at the same time she behaved like a capricious child. Hearing this, the woman thought that Karina always had plenty of everything. The gentleman suggests that his wife not discuss this yet, but simply wait a month at most. Meanwhile, Karina is lying in bed next to her in the room. A young gentleman is sitting. When the girl woke up, she saw a guy, and she doesn't believe that it's really him. The young man says that the temperature continues to persist and asks the girl not to get up. Seeing him, the main character does not understand why he is here and asks him about it. The gentleman replies that he promised because she was categorically against the doctor, and he doubted whether he should now call a person to look after her. The young man reports that he decided to sit with the lady until the morning. Surprised lady, ask if he is serious. The man answers that otherwise, why would he look at the documents here and not in a comfortable office, and asks if he is bothering her. Karina asks what can interfere with caring for a sick person. The young man says that she is a guest, and he is the owner and the agreement she proposed is valid. And he invites the girl not to be shy, but to behave like an ordinary guest. The guy with scarlet eyes asks the lady if she needs anything. 
However, he claims that he has never cared for anyone and therefore has little understanding. Hearing this, Karina was surprised and asks if it is true that he is taking care of a sick person for the first time. The young man replies that this is true because this is his first time having such an experience. The main character says that it's nice to have someone next to her when she's sick, and she reports that she also often looked after her brothers and sister. Hearing this, the gentleman thought that she was talking about how no one had ever sat with her. The gentleman says that he heard that the youngest daughter of the Leopold family is in poor health, and, as a rule, in every family where there is a patient, difficult relationships develop, and especially when it comes to parental love, it will always tip the scales in one direction. The guy understands that the fever is not going down and things are bad. The girl says that there are medicines in her bag that she forgot to take with her. Hearing this, the gentleman says that he will go get him. However, the girl stops him, holding his hand, and says that not now. However, the gentleman does not agree with her because she has a high fever. He sits down near the bed and says that her stubbornness is stronger than any chains. Karina realizes that a chill is creeping through her weakened body and darkness is clouding her eyes. But the pleasure and warmth of his touch brings a smile to her lips. The gentleman says that it is not yet dawn and invites her to sleep a little. Hearing this, the girl asks if she will fall asleep, if he will leave. The guy says that he will sit in the room until Fen wakes up and he will be nearby, and he invites the lady to fall asleep quickly. Hearing this, Karina thought it was such a wonderful feeling as if she had unexpectedly received a birthday gift that she had never dared to dream of. The guy with black hair thought about a telegram and that he better send it when winter is over. And looking at the lady, I thought that she was tormented by something. He understands that the lady at home has no one to count on and he should support the girl for the next three to four months. Entering the room, the gentleman says that the temperature has barely subsided and she has already risen from the bed. The girl replies that she was bored just lying there. After all, a week had passed since she came to her senses after losing consciousness. During this time, something has changed. Karina claims that firstly, her health has deteriorated so much that even when walking calmly, she begins to feel short of breath. And secondly, the gentleman began to come every day to check her condition, putting his palm to her forehead as a greeting. The young master says that the fever has passed, and he does not understand why she is cowering like a frightened rabbit. He asks if he is afraid. Is it possible that he will eat her? The guy asks if the girl had lunch. Karina says that she did not want to catch his eye once again, so as not to irritate him with her presence. Hearing this, the guy invites her to have lunch together. He invites her to get ready slowly and go out, since he will be waiting for her at the door. Although at first the duke seemed indifferent to her, he showed touching care for the girl. The gentleman reports that he will still be away from the estate quite often due to his campaign against demonic beasts, and therefore, she does not have to return to the outhouse. Karina asks if she joins him on the hike. Will she disturb him? Hearing this, the gentleman says, Of course. However, the girl smiled and said that she actually did not plan to get ready. The guy with scarlet eyes says that he knows that she likes to draw, because I saw drawing supplies in her bag. The girl replies that she likes to draw and thought that even her family had never asked her such questions. The young man invites her to climb onto the roof of the estate during dawn or sunset, and then a magnificent view will open before her. He says that she is not very healthy and suggests being careful when climbing onto the roof. The gentleman says that in the north, a cold wind blows from morning to evening and suggests that the girl dress warmly and warn him or Fung before going to the roof, and let her be sure to come down every hour to warm herself. Hearing this, the lady thought that he was too demanding and therefore the servants did not like him. However, the guy insists that she remember that if she doesn't want to become a crazy squid, he reminds her how during her engagement she hung around the maids as if tied, and it was written on her face that she was dragged by force. The gentleman claims that if it was so, she really didn't want to get married, she could have just said it. The main character explains that the engagement was arranged by her parents. Without even asking her consent, they said that this matter had long been decided and that's why they didn't show up themselves, to the engagement ceremony due to another seizure of Leah. Hearing this, the gentleman asks for forgiveness, because he behaved rudely. However, the main character claims that there is no need to apologize. The duke claims that he is also to blame because he did not ask her opinion, wanting to fulfill the last will of his late predecessor. And in general, he wanted to ask if she didn't like something to tell him directly about it. 
The young master says that if she doesn't like something, then let her tell him about it directly. The girl thought that she had never told anyone before about what she liked and how the engagement went, and since she did not refuse, otherwise it would fall on Avelia's shoulders. The guy asks what kind of food Karina likes. She replies that she doesn't eat fatty foods. The guy heard this and said that for a tender girl, there should be tender food. He asks if she is hungry and suggests that she hurry up. Moving into the room, the lady was surprised by its luxury. The gentleman reports that in winter, the weather in the north is harsh, but during snowfall, it is incredibly beautiful here. The guy reports that the architects of the north did their best when erecting the glass dome. Hearing this, Karina wonders when it will start snowing. The gentleman reports that this year has been cold, and he thinks there will be snow around the beginning of next month. Karina says that the county is not particularly cold in winter, and therefore you won't see snowfall there. The guy says that the southern winter cannot compare with the northern one. However, what is important is that her food gets cold and suggests eating faster. The count tells the maids to put all the non-greasy food aside for the girls. Hearing this, the lady was surprised, because before the meal he had thought about her. The count asks the girl if she is so weak that he would spoon-feed her. Karina replies that everything is not so bad. However, the girl feels awkward because she thought that he was indifferent and didn't really know anything about him. Karina thought that he risked getting into trouble by taking her under his wing. She thought that she had been stupid. The gentleman looked at the girl, and he did not understand what was wrong with her, and asked if the food was not to her taste. The young lady turns to the guy and says his lordship, however, hearing this, the gentleman says that she can call him Million or Lion, and he asks what she wanted to say. The girl asks for forgiveness, because she arbitrarily came to his estate without warning in advance. Although she did it in such a way as she was afraid that he would refuse to accept her, Hearing this, Lion says that of course he would refuse, and not because she is unpleasant to him or somehow burdensome, it's just dangerous to be here. The gentleman suggests not to take to heart the words he said on the day of her arrival. However, he realizes that he needs to apologize for them. Karina thought about whether she should tell him about the disease of art. However, there is no guarantee that the situation will change for the better, and in the worst case, she will no longer be able to remain a duchy. The young lady wishes the guy bon appétit. Million says that next time he will ask her to cook more dishes that suit her taste. However, now he suggests that the girl eat more cheerfully, otherwise the chef will cry. Karina thought that she had not eaten enough for a long time, and their casual conversation was very pleasant. Looking out the window, the girl thought that she needed to go up to the roof tomorrow. Karina reports that this is incredible. However, Lion claims that she turned a deaf ear to his words. The young lady asks the gentleman for forgiveness. He invites her to explain why she decided to go to the roof wearing only a cape, and asks if she forgot her promise. Karina says she remembers everything, and firstly, she must warn Million or the butler, and only then go. Secondly, dress warmly. Thirdly, every hour they go out to warm up, but when she went out into the corridor, I noticed that there was no one there, because everyone was sleeping. The girl thought that it was a pity to wake them up because she will take only one look and return. Going out onto the roof, the young lady saw the beauty of nature and thought that it all needed to be captured. Drawing with a pencil, the girl thought that she still had a little time left. Suddenly, the young master throws a blanket over the girl, and screaming, he asks why she didn't immediately say that she wanted to turn into ice, because then he would have given her an ice bath. Karina explains that she accidentally got so carried away that she lost track of time. Lion looked at the lady and didn't understand how she could smile like that now. The Duke asks if she would like to become a living heater because she can save money on fuel. Hearing this, the young lady asks if his lordship is cold, and if you need a heater, she can give you her blanket. Karina thought about how she had been sitting wrapped in a blanket for an hour. Suddenly, the guy asks if he can look at her drawing. The girl agrees and says that there is nothing special about him. The lady thought that Infric was excellent at fencing and joined the emperor's personal knightly squad. Fedrin can repeat anything the first time. Avelia, with her golden hands, is capable of masterfully making embroidery of any complexity, and compared to their successes, her paintings are far from perfect. Million, looking at the picture, says that, looking at her work, he understands that excessive modesty is also bad, and he says that he is not very knowledgeable in this area, and therefore cannot give an expert assessment but this drawing impresses him. 
The gentleman says that he would never have thought that the landscape from the top of his estate could be so beautiful. He invites my lady to be more confident in herself. The girl thought that this was the first time she had been praised like that. Lyon says he is serious and is already looking forward to the finished version. The lady reports that she knows that the gentleman is flattering her, but she is still pleased. The gentleman objects to her and says that he does not joke with such things, and if he did not see any potential, he would advise him to find another occupation. The girl thanks him. Million asks the girl that when she finishes the drawing, she will give it to him, because he would like to ask one talented acquaintance to appreciate him. Karina says that, of course, she will give it back, but offers to do without grades, because that's not why she draws. The lady thought that she was actually drawing to escape loneliness. And to be honest, this is too embarrassing. Suddenly, someone knocks in the room, and after knocking a man enters. And he says that his lordship did not know how the lady dressed and wrapped her in a pile of blankets. Lion offers to put aside the jokes. He says that it seems that the long journey took a toll on the lady's health, and she also spent this morning on the roof under the cold wind. The gentleman invites the doctor to carefully examine the girl. The doctor looked at the lady and said that with his permission he would examine her. However, the girl was wrapped in a blanket, and he thought that something was wrong. The surprised duke asks what Milady is doing. The girl explains that she asked not to bring doctors. Leon says that she herself, with her frivolity, forced him to call a doctor. He orders the girl to quickly crawl out from under the blanket and allow herself to be examined. The lady says she will feel better if she rests. The duke says that he knew that she would not listen and tells her to quickly go to bed. He takes the girl by the arm, and at this time she screams out what he is doing, because a noble lady must be picked up carefully. Million says that he is very careful with her and threw her on the bed. Seeing this, the doctor does not understand what they have come to, because the duke talks and treats the lady like a careless soldier. The doctor says, addressing his lordship, that the southerners will not tolerate the same rude treatment as the northerners. Hearing this, Lyon says that he is to blame. A man in a white robe reports that the lady did not hold a grudge against his lordship and let her be kind and extend her hand to him. When the doctor examined the girl's hand, she felt a loss of strength at that time. Seeing this, the doctor suggested that she lie down if she was tired. At this time, the girl thought that she should not fall asleep. Leon asks the doctor why he looked so gloomy. A man in a white coat reports that the lady is very ill because the pulse is unstable and weak because the heartbeat is distant and vague. The doctor looked at the lady's hands and said that they were bruised. He says that this is rare in the North, and it looks like a disease of art. The man says that even he knows that the Aeos Empire originally received the blessing of art. The North was captured relatively recently, and therefore there are more military people here. However, in the South, starting from the capital, there are a lot of famous artists. The doctor reveals that he knows that sometimes people are born who have received too much of this blessing, and often they create miracles with the help of art. However, such a power that surpasses human capabilities is also called divine right. Leon says that if you think about it, Ferriol's music, into which he puts his soul, has the power of healing. The doctor says that he said everything correctly, since the Carlos family is a famous family of artists even in the empire, and Lady Leopold has the power to perform such miracles. A man in a white coat reports that vague bruises on the inside of the handle near the armpit are one of the symptoms. The Duke thought that even he didn't understand anything about art. Her drawing made me tremble, because the familiar landscape had never turned out to be so beautiful for him, and he had a feeling as if he felt the bit captured by her in the drawing. Million wonders how serious the lady's condition is. The doctor says that her body is very weak, and with his skills, such a conclusion of the disease is divided into several types. The first is when the symptoms of the disease are only a slight loss of strength. Second, then the limbs or sense organs fail. However, there is a third one that is rare and almost never seen, when power takes life energy as payment. The Duke understands that in the worst case scenario, the lady could die. The doctor says that such cases are extremely rare, but it is quite possible. Leon understands that this is cruel for God's blessing, and in any case, this power surpasses human power. The Duke thinks that he cannot ask, since she fell asleep due to the fever. He asks the doctor if this can be cured anyway. The man in the white coat says that as far as he knows, this disease is incurable, and besides the painkiller, all he can do is watch as she loses her limbs or dies. The doctor reports that in order to save the lady's life, 
she must give up Art, but this is unlikely to happen. Hearing this, the surprised Duke asks whether Art can be more valuable than life. He doesn't understand why he can't be stopped. A man in a white robe reports whether he refused, under threat of death or loss of limbs, to leave his sword on the battlefield. Upon hearing this, Lyon says that he takes back his words. The doctor says that all those who suffer from the disease of art value their gift too much to simply give it up. Million thinks that there was no talk about this during the rescue. He suggests that perhaps the lady devoted most of her life to art. The Duke thanks the doctor for the examination and says that he will recover the message to Ferial. The man says that the lady is very weak and suggests to be careful. The doctor says he will leave the antipyretic medicine. Leon looked at the sleeping girl, thinking about what she was trying to hide from him. The gentleman lit a cigar and thought that then Karina almost cried. At the engagement ceremony, she constantly cast a sad glance at the place where the heir to the dukedom and her younger brother were sitting. The gentleman recalls that when someone came up to congratulate them, she suppressed a smile, and this irritated him terribly because he could no longer endure it. He lost his temper and called her a squid. The guy thought he heard that the lady would get angry, but this fool laughed good-naturedly. After some time, a dove flew up to the gentleman, and he attached a message for Ferial to his leg. The teacher informs Nikton that he is suddenly heading north. He orders the guy to look after the clinic until he returns, which may be earlier than spring next year. Hearing this, the guy says that it is dangerous in the north in winter. However, the doctor replies that everything is in order, and if he leaves now, he will have time to get there before severe frosts. Nickton reports that winter will begin during his journey, and he does not understand why he needed to go there. The teacher explains that about a month ago, a lady approached him who did not have much time left due to art illness, and she said that she would go north. The man says that this bothers him, and that's why he also goes there. Because in the north there are no doctors who understand the disease of art. The guy with green hair offers to wait, because he said that she doesn't have long left, and this means that this is the rarest type of art disease. The doctor replies that this is the first time in his practice that he has encountered this diagnosis. The man understands that nothing can be done about the lady's condition, and most likely, she will die. No one knows in Trisuet why the teacher is following this lady, and he assumes that she is from a noble and wealthy family. The teacher says that, judging by the state she found herself in, her parents were completely indifferent to her, and if they had paid the lady at least some attention, it wouldn't have come to this. And the guy with green hair, understands that there are parents who abandon their children, and he doesn't understand why there shouldn't be such hard-hearted parents. The teacher claims that if, upon his return, he hears that no matter what is bad about the clinic, he will not just leave it like that. The guy claims that he filled everything out well and tells him not to worry. The doctor remembers who this patient was. However, he cannot remember her name. Mr. Leopold asks his father if there has been any news about Karina, since a month has passed since she left. The man replies that there is only one report that her trace has been lost in the capital, and the search continues. Infric invites his father to involve soldiers in the search for his sister. However, the father replies that they cannot do this, and if their soldiers are within the capital, there may be misunderstanding on the part of the emperor. The father does not understand why his daughter is so stubborn. Infric says that he still feels uneasy, because suddenly something happens to her. The man looks through family photographs, and realizes that he did not have a portrait of Karina. He remembers what his daughter told him, that they don't remember where her room is, and that in recent years they have never visited her. Mr. Leopold says that Evely is sick, and her room is closest to the stairs, so that the doctor can come in conveniently. Infric commutes to work every day, so his room is next. Ferdin, as the youngest of the brothers, owns the room after her. The father remembers that Karina told him that she didn't like her room, because it was scary and too far from the stairs. He thought about how he had scolded her back then, saying that eldest sister shouldn't be capricious. Mr. Leopold, remembering this now, thinks that she was still little and could really be afraid. However, except for the day he came to scold her for giving Leah street food without permission, that this is the last time he wanted to see Karina. While in his daughter's room, the father thought that it was a little cramped for an adult girl, and she should have been told if she needed anything. The gentleman looked at his daughter's drawing and thought that when Leah felt well, they went for a walk together to this place, but then Karina was not with them, comes into the room asking her husband what he is doing here. Cassius replies that he is just thinking and asks the woman why she came. 
the woman with red hair says that she still can't calm down because her daughter is leaving. And so she decided to come in, even though her room seems so unfamiliar. Seeing the drawing, the woman asks what it is. The husband replies that this is a drawing of Karina, and the woman says that she has not seen her drawings for a long time. The surprised father asks if Karina has been drawing. The woman replies that as a child, her daughter sometimes brought her to show her her work, but, apparently, at some point she became shy and stopped, and she thought that her daughter had given up this activity. However, mom is worried and asks if Karina is all right. Kasia says that Karina is a smart child and she will not get lost. However, he will send telegrams to the aristocrats he knows. The red-haired woman smiles and says that she has never expressed dissatisfaction, and she does not understand why Leah constantly wonders when sister will return. And Ferdin keeps trying to go and look for her. They are all so worried about Karina. The gentleman invites his wife to look after Leah while Karina is away, but her condition cannot be allowed to deteriorate further due to anxiety and lack of sleep. He thought about sending a telegram to Duke Festelio, just in case. And he understands, although it is unlikely that she went there. Kazia says that the road to the north is dangerous, and it would be even more difficult to get there with the money she took. Karina would not have dared to make such a trip, and, at best, would have stopped anywhere in the capital. The gentleman says that he will sort it out, and invites his wife not to worry, because he will ask his friends in the capital and its environs about this. A woman with red hair looks at the drawing and realizes that, looking at it, it seems to her that she was unbearably lonely. Nikton asks Leah if she is sad. The girl asks in surprise if this is noticeable. Since she remembered her sister, two months had already passed since she left home. The guy thinks that Karina Leopold is a quiet and inconspicuous child, and compared to her luxurious golden curls, her dull brown hair is not striking, but her blue eyes are extraordinarily beautiful. Avelia reports that her sister was always there when she was sick, and therefore, even without friends, she was not lonely. She says that if she asked to read a fairy tale, then sister read it, and if she asked to sleep together, then she agreed. The girl says that if she said that she was lonely, then Karina did not meet with friends and stayed with her. Leah reports that when she was little, she was a little jealous that sister could leave the house, and sometimes deliberately did not let her go. However, now she doesn't do that. Hearing this, Nickton says that apparently, Mrs. Karina was a good older sister, and I thought that although perhaps she didn't love her that much. The girl says that she believed that her sister would catch her. After all, the words that she then quietly muttered, believe it or not, were so sincere that it made one wonder whether her affection was feigned. The guy thought that Karina should have written at least one letter, thinking about her sick sister. He suggests not to worry and try to get better so that he can go look for her as soon as possible. Leah says that she recently learned that her sister has a talent and says that she will show it soon. Having found the drawing, the girl shows it to Nickton. The guy saw this and was surprised because the drawing is so alive that it's like a real window before his eyes. The guy asks in surprise if it is true that this drawing was drawn by Mrs. Karina. Leah replies that she found this drawing in her sister's room because it is very beautiful and she does not understand why her sister did not show it. And if she were in her place, she would immediately run to show off to her mother. Nikton says goodbye to the girl because he is leaving, because he remembered one urgent matter. The young lady wished the guy a safe journey. Leaving the room, the guy with green hair found in his folder a doctor's note about Karina's diagnosis, and when he read it, he was very surprised. At this time, the main character woke up and felt that her throat was dry. She saw a decanter of water near the table and thought that his lordship had left it. The girl thought that she should not have come here because he found out about the illness. However, the girl does not want the gentleman to know the whole truth about her. Karina recalls that on the day when she was informed about her imminent death, she first of all thought about family relationships, which would begin to change over time. And, having learned about her illness, perhaps they would have given her long-awaited attention and warmth. However, the girl did not want to realize that she would get the attention she wanted only before her death. Karina, imagining a future where the love of her family was found in exchange for her inexorable life slipping like sand through her fingers, she felt unhappy. It was for these reasons that the young lady fled farther north, because her parents' hands cannot touch her. Karina thought, oh, million. It seemed to her that he hated her and would ignore her. The girl was going to live as if she didn't exist. However, 
the main character does not understand why the Duke is so caring towards her. Every person has a sore finger, but from her experience, she was convinced that life is not fair, and still everyone has their own priorities. The lady understands that for Million, she is just a guest, and she doesn't understand how a stranger can worry about her so much. The girl thought that she would die, and he would continue to live. After all, it's as if she needs to show pity or anxiety so that the Duke doesn't feel anything for her. Karina thinks that Lion should not consider himself to blame for her death. She remembers that she read a book earlier that talks about some kind of amulet that erases memories. The main character thought that if she had this book, she would be able to draw an amulet. After all, her ability can create any object drawn by her if she saw, felt, and understood it. The girl understands that the greatest thing is to draw the stopped heart of a dead person, because then the life force will be absorbed into him, which will allow him to be resurrected for a short time. However, since the power disappears after time, complete resurrection is impossible. Karina understands that this ability is, without a doubt, amazing. And if she had been born into a family with a deep history of art, then nothing would have been spared for her. The main character does not understand what is the point of blaming the family now, and it would be better for her to leave immediately and go to some monastery. She saw that soon the medicine would completely run out. However, her physical condition will not allow her to return to the South. The girl says that she doesn't understand what to do now. Suddenly, she heard a voice asking what she was talking about. Million asks the lady if she is awake. The guy comes closer to the girl and tells her that she is suffering from the disease of art. Leon says that he knows that her disease is divided into types, and he is interested in what kind she has. Hearing this, the girl asks for forgiveness. However, he suggests that she not apologize, but simply answer the question. The main character says that she knows that she acted selfishly and dishonestly. The gentleman says that no one is accusing her of anything. The girl says that she should not have arbitrarily showed up at his estate, and she is very ashamed about it. The young master, hearing this, thought that the conversation was not going well. He turns to the girl and asks if it is difficult for her to answer this question. Karina asks his lordship if he will allow her to move into the outbuilding, and she will try not to bother him anymore. And if she does bother him, she will leave this place immediately. Million says that she has barely come to her senses and is already asking to go to the outbuilding. He asks the girl if she will be paralyzed or die. He is interested in the question of what she is going to do. The guy says that there are no doctors in the North who can cure her, and she cannot leave the estate because of the demonic beasts. Hearing this, the girl waves her head and suggests forgetting about the doctors, because they are powerless. The Duke says that Mary said that all she had to do was give up art. Hearing this, the girl will recount, because then she will have nothing left. She cannot give up painting because there is nothing else in her life. Karina says that art is her only friend. Hearing this, Lion does not understand why she came here then. He asks the girl if she is going to remain silent again. The gentleman says that he's extremely patient with her. Karina says that perhaps her story will drag on and asks if his lordship would mind. Million says that he is ready to listen as much as he wants. Lady realizes that she has never told anyone about her feelings and doesn't know where to start. Ten minutes later, the main character begins to talk about how, in general, she went here a week later when she learned that she was sick with the disease of art. After all, she just wanted to sort out her thoughts in a quiet place, and perhaps it was just her imagination, but it would be unbearable for her to be with her family. The girl says that her birthday coincided with her brother's graduation ceremony, and therefore she did not have to celebrate it alone. She was forced to borrow a dear wallet, given to her by her mother for her birthday. Karina says that her younger sister was praised for every little thing, while she was ignored, despite her efforts. She did not want to experience these experiences again, and therefore ran away from home. The lady says that she understands that these things are very childish. Leon says that she celebrated her birthday herself, and asks if that's why she disrupted her older brother's graduation celebration. The girl objects, and then he asks if she demanded the return of the wallet, falling to the floor and acting up, or if she hit her younger brother. Upon hearing, this girl objects, and the guy again asks if she tortured her younger sister, jealous that she alone received all the praise. The surprised lady asks why he asks such strange questions. The Duke says that if she did all this, she might in this case think that it was childish. Lion says that he was childish when he was afraid that he accidentally spilled water on his father's documents. And after that, 
he ran away from home for a week, writing a note saying that he had gone on a trip. The guy says that her behavior cannot be called childish, because on the contrary, she was always inferior to her brothers and sister. The main character says that giving in to family is a given. Hearing this, the Duke asks in surprise why she decided that. At first she wanted to explain something to the girls. But however, she thought about how since when did she begin to take concessions for granted. Million approached the lady and hugged her, inviting her not to hold back and cry if she wanted. The guy says that when he cried, they usually consoled him like that. The Duke says that if the girl cries, she will feel better, and then she can finish her story. Suddenly, the young lady began to cry, and the gentleman thought that stress would accumulate if she cried so restrainedly. The main character thought that she had not cried so much in front of other people for a long time. The girl saw that the guy had a wet shirt, and apologized after all. It was all because of her. Leon says that it's better to tell her at such a moment. Thank you for being there. Heard this girl thanked him, and he tells her that she shouldn't just say the words, I'm sorry and everything is fine. The Duke explains that if she constantly puts herself down, the other person will get used to it. And he will stop taking her words seriously because for her, they will become natural. Because in the end, these words will lose their value and the person will laugh at her and she will only be more depressed. The guy says that words of gratitude are always accepted by both. The main character thought about something that she had never thought about before. Because she was wrong, in order to avoid the situation, she said that everything was fine when there was nothing she could do. Karina understands that gradually these words lost their color and became worthless. However, quietly tying her up, the girl thanks the guy and invites him to call her by her name Karina. Million looks at the girl and invites her to rest. Suddenly, a servant informs his lordship that a response has arrived from Hertz Ferial Carlos. The Duke says in surprise that it's unexpectedly fast for Ferial, but he doesn't understand why Fen is looking at him like that. The servant replies that he thought that his lordship was not betraying himself. The master does not understand what his servant is talking about and offers to give him the letter. He says that he doesn't remember anything like this happening before. Leon reads the letter, which says that he asks him to use a miracle to take care of a person. The man writes that the duke is a thirtieth bastard who must first learn to ask properly. The gentleman thought that, judging by the letter, he would not have to wait long. And he says that this matter can wait. At this time, the servant informs Mr. Doctor that he is lucky. Because in the north, at the beginning of winter, when preparations are underway to exterminate demonic beasts, passing the checkpoint is a great success. After all, at this rate, they will probably arrive in the land of the duchy before the snowfall. The doctor thanks and says it's good because they have time. The servant says that he should be the one thanking the doctor because he saved his sick daughter. He is interested in the question of why he embroiders a map on fabric. The man with glasses explains that he is just looking for someone. Karina thought that she had recently acquired a new hobby, because every morning at dawn when he was training, she secretly drew him, because the duke is not like her, and he is like a shining sun. Its bright shine under the moonlight repeatedly attracted her gaze. After all, every time she saw him, she was overcome with inspiration, and she came to her senses only when the sun was already at zenith. The main character thought that she needed to write something down, and I thought a little, she decided to write down everything that she would like to do, but came up with absolutely nothing. The lady says that maybe she should ask Million about the beautiful views of the North. Suddenly, the girl hears the Duke telling her that in the North, apart from demonic beasts, there is not much to see. She invites the guy to knock if he comes into the room. Hearing this, the gentleman says that for reference, he knocked as many as five times. He wonders what the girl was doing if she didn't hear his knock. The guy took her drawing, and suddenly the girl screams that he should not look at him. Million says that he thought why she gets up late every day, and it turns out that the girl was drawing at dawn. The lady explains that it's just that when he swings his sword under the dim sky, he looks extraordinary. He understands that the girl was simply trying to capture this myth, because he is completely unaware of how time flies. The main character asks why he came. The gentleman says that he will soon go on an expedition, and he wanted to offer to go together, because the girl is bored. Sit on the estate forever. Hearing this, the girl was very happy and agreed to go with him. Karina dressed up and asks if they will ride in a carriage and go out on foot. The gentleman tells us to go. Sitting in the carriage, Lyon says that for a noblewoman, she behaves very reservedly. He asks if her parents taught her etiquette. The lady replies that her parents taught her brothers and sister. One explains that at that time, sister was very ill, 
and, apparently, her parents could not pay much attention to her. The Duke looked at the girl and thought that it would be impolite to ask further. However, he is interested in the question of whether she has a notebook with her. Karina says that she planned to write down what she would like to do there, but couldn't come up with anything useful. And that's why her notebook remains empty. Million argues that the desire must be grandiose. He invites the girl to write something simple, something that comes to mind first and that she can bring to life. The gentleman says that maybe it's none of his business, but she demands too much from herself. As long as she was raised separately from her brothers and sister, she might have been at least a little upset or angry. The guy says that the world is huge, and she shouldn't downplay her importance by remembering the county, because the county had grown a tree that should have been replanted from a small pot. However, the tree could not do anything, and continued to grow until one day it could no longer bear it and escaped from the pot on its roots. The Duke says it's not her fault. Suddenly the girl smiled, and he wondered what made her laugh so much. The lady says that she imagined a tree running on legs. Leon claims that he was serious. Arriving in the city, the girl was surprised because she ended up at the Festival of Abundance. After all, she doesn't understand how in the winter in the north, with an abundance of food, a festival can be held. The gentleman explains that in winter, they have their fill and gorge themselves on meat, to maintain strength before the attack of demonic creatures. Looking at the girl, he thinks about what she was thinking about. The guy says the meat is from demonic beasts, because they are hungry and come down to the city and they destroy them and eat them. However, the skin and bones of monsters make good products and decorations. Looking at the monster, Karina thought that amazing was not the right word, since amazing it seemed to be alive. Lion asks the girl if she wants something. Suddenly, the lady felt something strange, and the gentleman said that apparently a demonic beast had appeared nearby and he needed to go and have a look. Suddenly, a soldier announces that reinforcements have arrived, and Lion asks what the situation is. The knight explains that the group is now holding back the monsters by handing over. Coming closer to the monster, the duke tells everyone to maintain a defensive position and not retreat. He invites Milady to stay inside the castle, and in the meantime, he jumps down. The knight says that this is the demonic beast of Kurt that appeared recently, and it is so strong that they cannot inflict a single scratch on it. However, he is afraid to imagine someone who goes against him one-on-one. -on -one. Leon says that in order to destroy him, you need to recognize his weak point because it is not easy, because the Lord can only distill it. At this time, Karina thought that she needed to help Million with something. The girl quickly takes the paper and draws, thinking that this should work. Karina saw the wounded and Duke B, who had red liquid on his face. Knight reports that several people had minor injuries, but no one was seriously injured. Seeing the girl, Lion claims that she should have stayed upstairs, because he would have gone up to her himself. The lady wipes his face. However, he stops her and says that he is fine. Million takes the girl by the hands and says that the lady's hands are icy, because the people who were looking after her didn't even think about bringing her a blanket. Karina says that she was not cold at all. However, the master tells her to accept it as a gift. Seeing this, the knights shouted that this was impossible. He heard their screams. The duke orders everyone who screamed to make a hundred circles around the training palace. A surprised girl asks if this is a stone paskolku on Tyopli. Sir, explain that this is called Charon, and this is a rare item that appears when you defeat a demonic beast. Hearing this, the lady wondered why he gave it to her. Lion asks what question he should start with. Milayan Obiasnyet, a northern tradition, says that a person in poor health will get better if he carries it with him. Mister informs that he hopes the lady will recover soon. The young lady thanked him and said she liked it. Lion says that they will watch the festival tomorrow and suggests moving back. Suddenly, Karina heard that her complexion had improved, and the man said that he had not seen his mistress for a long time. Karina looked at the man and recognized the doctor. She asks in surprise how he ended up here. The doctor says that he has his own methods, but what is more important is who is next to her. The gentleman says his name is Malayo Festilio. The doctor says his name is Winston. And at this time, he thought that the name seemed familiar to him, and she was the same lady from the Leopold family who was engaged to this archduke. Leon says that he thinks the conversation will be long, and he suggests going back first. At the estate, a man says that the duke had to go through a difficult journey. The blonde man thanks him for taking the time to accept him. Carlos asks where the drawings he asked for are. The man replies that they are prepared, and he does not understand why the master needs them. Sitting at the table, the gentleman was eating, and suddenly a bird flew near him. 
after which his hair shook. Seeing the dove, he says that everything is fine, and he knows that this bird is sending him a message. Carlos thought that he had not contacted him, but suddenly he wrote. The letter said that this drawing was of a lady from Leopold County, and apparently she is sick with the disease of art. However, she does not want to talk about it, so with the help of his wonderful gift, he must find out the type of disease and the method of treatment. Million Festilo asks to convey to the Count Leopold that he took his daughter to live with him. The Duke asks if he wanted to see his second daughter's drawings, and the servant reports that he brought everything without exception. Casius quickly rearranges the drawings and says that he is unlikely to like such mediocre works, given the long-standing connection of their kind with art. Carlos says that a man should learn how to properly evaluate a work of art. Hey, it's funny to hear something like this from a person who doesn't understand their artistic craft. Hearing this, the Duke apologizes and says that he has no idea. No, I don't understand why he needed to come and look at Karina's drawings. Cassius says he behaves outrageously. Carlos thought that this was the man telling him that he was so carefully preserving his works of art. And he found out about it. He is sponsored by various masters. The average group of people suffering from art disease, with rare exceptions, are people who have good relationships with their families. More than once he met those who deliberately hid their illness. Because in this case, the relationship is so bad that Karina kept silent about her art. Carlos, turning to the Count, asks him if he knows that his daughter is sick with the disease of art. Hearing this, Casilla says that it is impossible, since Karina did not have such great talent. However, he doesn't understand how she could run away from home if she was actually sick. The Count reports that they continue to look for her. Carlos asks if in this house a regular trip to see the groom is considered an elopement. He reports that Duke Festalio sent him here. Hearing this, Cassius was very surprised. The man with blonde hair says he has no idea where his daughter is and claims she is healthy, and it turns out that his dear friend did not deceive him. Duke Leopold, screaming, says that if he has finished with his business, he asks him to leave. Kylos thought that he had learned everything he needed. The Duke thanks him for informing him of his daughter's whereabouts, and later, he will thank him properly. The man with blonde hair says he's having fun. However, the Duke does not understand what he is talking about. The man explains that he did not believe in his daughter's illness and that it was easy for her to be interrupted in the North. Kylo says that this is surprising because the Duke only hears what he wants to hear and what he is ready to believe. However, if he were in his place, if he were told that his child was sick, first of all, he asked what kind of illness it was and how she was feeling. The man with blonde hair says goodbye to the Duke and leaves. Kylos thinks that in most of the works the subject of art is depicted and there is only paper left, and this means that a miracle is a creation. He realizes that it may already be too late. Infric enters his father's office and reports that he finished his work early and immediately came to him. However, Nickton also wanted to meet him, and so they came together. The father asks how she is like her daughter Avelia. The guy with green hair says that she is experiencing a loss of strength, but her general condition is normal. And if she does not overwork, she will be able to participate in tea parties and banquets. Casius, hearing about this, says that this is happiness and suggests that the guy pay more attention to her since she must be feeling lonely. The Duke is interested in what happened to Dahlia. Nikton Gavorichto is Zase that due to a slight illness, she did not sleep well, and therefore she became tired. And if she takes medication and gets plenty of rest, she will recover quickly. The guy says that's it. He takes his leave. As he left the office, he thought about whether he should tell the Duke about Milady Karina's illness. Nickton understands that if Leah finds out the truth, it will be even worse for her. The guy thought that the teacher had left. And therefore, with his return in the spring, news appeared about Lady Karina. Duke Leopold tells his son that Duke Carlos was here recently, and asks if he met him. Infric says that he did not meet him, but he saw an unknown carriage, and he is interested in what business he came for. Father says that Carlos said that Karina is now with Duke Festalio. Hearing this, the son screams that they must move out immediately. Casius asks the guy to be quiet, because in any case, if they go now, they may not get there, since the checkpoint in the north may be closed. The father asks his son that when he went to Karina's engagement instead of him, he saw the duke and asks what kind of person he seemed to him. Infric answers that he is the same person as they say about him, and it seemed to him that there was nothing to find fault with him. And during the engagement, he also took good care of Karina. However, he didn't take a closer look, but he thinks that Karina liked him too. 
Herzog Leopold thought that he really had her so much that the daughter even left the house to visit the Duke. Infrick says that they haven't even gotten married yet, and he doesn't understand what kind of childishness this is. The father says, why bother if she hasn't even sent a single letter, because it's disrespectful to her parents. The young master asks what his father thinks about the conversation with Karina. As soon as she returns, after all, by nature she is taciturn, and they might not know something. Cassius argues that they should not meet with her themselves and discuss everything when everything went wrong. Meanwhile, in the north, Karina asks the doctor how he found her. The man replies that he used the power of a miracle. It may not be noticeable at first glance, but it is good for embroidery. The surprised duke asks how he uses embroidery. The doctor says that he can find something he needs, and, for example, thinks that he wants to find his glasses. And if he sets fire to the embroidery, no matter what the pattern, he will immediately know where they are. The doctor says that when he was young, he used this ability to help the guards catch criminals. Lion asks if he uses the past tense now, too. The doctor answers that it is true that he also suffers from the disease of art, and besides, he is not very lucky, and gradually loses his sight. The doctor says that he thought that if God really exists, then he is cruel, because he takes away the sight of the person who embroiders. Karina asks in surprise if he is blind now. The man objects and says that he almost lost his sight, but he sees something because he got to her safely. Leon says this means his illness is curable. The doctor says that, to be honest, there is no cure for the disease of art. The duke, surprised, claims that he can still see. The man explains that he stopped embroidering, and this is the simplest and fastest solution. The lady asks if this is the only way. However, the doctor claims that not everyone is susceptible to art disease. And among artists, the incidence rate is 1%. After all, the loss of such a sense as vision is not a rare symptom. The rarest case occurs when, in exchange for a miracle, a disease takes a life, and according to estimates, this is about one person in 50-60 years. The Duke understands that this means the likelihood of death is low. The doctor says that if he is not interested in anything else, and asks if he can ask a couple of questions in Melody, because he wants to discuss it in his room. Million agrees because it doesn't matter to him. Karina turning to Lion, she says that she had a great time today, and if he doesn't mind, then he can invite her again. The doctor asks the girl if the Archduke knows. The lady says that the situation is not suitable because living with a person who will definitely die. Karina says that this is why she thought of running away quietly because she didn't want to hurt Million. The main character says that the Duke supports her with such warmth that she wants to stay here a little longer and asks if this is really selfish. The girl asks for forgiveness for deceiving him. However, the doctor replies that everything is fine because the stage of her illness is much more important. He is interested in if the Duke has a family doctor. Karina says that she does not trust him and therefore was looking for another specialist. The doctor asks why, and the girl replies that the story will be long. The man says it's okay. After all, anxiety is the source of many diseases and asks what happened. Karina asks if the doctor knows about this. The girl explains that she has never been at the center of the world to which she belongs. There have always been other people there. The younger sister who supports her brother, the heir of the family, and the older sister for whom sacrificing herself for the sake of her younger ones is the norm. The main character says that her life is one that cannot be greedy for anything. The girl remembers that she asked her mother to sleep together after all, she was sad to give her wallet to her younger brother. Hearing this, the mother says that she is tired and invites her daughter to return to her place. The lady with red hair claims that what she said is not, because it was quite difficult to calm down Ferdin, since she is the eldest daughter, so she should give in. Hearing this, Karina screams that she wishes she weren't younger. Hearing this, my mother screams and says that she is not smart and calls herself an older sister. Mom says she should be grateful that she was born healthy, but she can't even set an example for her younger ones. A woman with red hair says that she would like her daughter Leah to be at least half as healthy as Karina. The main character explains that when she talked about being sick, she was always treated like a malingerer. And she was always told that compared to other unhappy children, her life was wonderful. And if she grumbles, she will be sent to a beggarly village. The doctor takes the girl by the hands and says that being with those who hurt her is very difficult. He says she held on for so long because it was difficult. And it may not be a big deal compared to her story, but he's had his share of heartbreak too. The doctor says that he liked to embroider, but people around him said that it was not a man's business. 
His parents wanted him to become a knight and receive a title, but he did not want this and only became more attached to embroidery. When the doctor was embroidering, no thought troubled his mind, and he asks if it was the same for her. The man says that one day he lost something dear to him and looked for it everywhere, but in the end he gave up. Then he burned the embroidered items as belongings of the deceased after the funeral rite. However, after this a miracle happened that he had shown the girls earlier. After that, the doctor began to catch criminals, as if he had become a hero. He was looking for children or pets who had run away from home. The man says that he cannot describe in words how it feels to become the main character in a life in which everyone ignored her. However, when about twenty years passed, his eyesight began to deteriorate, and he could not do good embroidery. The doctor reports that he was diagnosed with an art disease and was told that if he continued to embroider, he would go blind. Hearing about this, the man was in despair and wanted to die. Then he went on a journey to put everything in order. After all, I found my new dream in it. The doctor says that he wanted to treat the sick, and I didn't want to call the disease of art incurable, so he couldn't leave her in the dark. Hearing this, Karina says that she understands. The doctor says that this is good, since she is still far from home. However, some will say that facing pain is a shortcut to healing, because the doctor believes that removing the pain is also a good way. And now it has left the old boundaries, and therefore it is time to create new connections and memories. Karina thought about how she thought she had acted cowardly when she ran away without saying a word. The doctor reports that the story about the family doctor and his family is still not over. However, Karina was ashamed to say. But she was 17 years old when he appeared on her estate. And she, as usual, walked in the garden. Because they couldn't see each other, they collided. The guy named Nickton and says that he will now be her family doctor. And that's how her first love began. The meeting with Nickton was like the first spring that came late. He was polite and nice, and that's why she felt someone's tenderness for the first time. Walking in the garden, the girl thought that she wanted to talk to Nickton. Coming closer to him, she called his name and apologized. The surprised guy asks why Lady Karina came here. The girl says that she was interested in what he was doing. Nickton explains that the flowers blooming in the garden are so beautiful, and that is why he thought that she would like them. The girl looked at the guy who had a flower in his hands and thought that maybe he would give it to her. The lady thought that she had not received flowers before and did not understand how to answer. Suddenly the guy invites Leah to look at the flower because it is so beautiful. At this time, Karina thought that she was mistaken. In the library, Avelia talks about how she wants to play outside. However, Karina suggests that she be patient a little longer since Nickton told her to rest today. Avelia does not understand why Nickton tells her to stay at home, even if she is just a little sick. The girl says that even if she pretends that she is not sick, then Nickton, he will understand everything. Karina explains to her sister that the guy should always keep an eye on her, and for this, he behaves even more caringly. At this time, Karina thought that she was jealous of her younger sister because she was a useless older sister. However, suddenly the cabinet falls and Karina can barely hold it. At this time, Nickton enters the room and Leah tells him that she is an accident. A guy with green hair asks a girl if she got hurt. Leah replies that she is fine, and at this time Karina can barely hold the closet. Suddenly, Nickton turns to the main character and, screaming, asks what she is doing because Leah, unlike her, is weak. Karina explains that everything is wrong, because the wardrobe suddenly, and at that time, the guy says that, fortunately, it fell on her. And he is interested in the question of what would have happened if he had fallen on Leah. Nickton, opening up, asks why they even came to this dangerous place since she can't even protect her and asks if she wants to finish off her younger sister. The guy claims that if something dangerous happened to Lilia, he would definitely stop it. After all, he cannot lose it again. Nickton left the office, holding Avelia in his arms. At this time, the main character was very scared. The girl was in pain because of the fallen books, and she sat in place without moving and waited, but no one came. Hearing this, the doctor thought that he had warned Nickton, and he told him not to take on sick people who looked like his dead sister, and be impartial in your affairs. Karina says that then she realized that for Mr. Doctor, she was nobody. And for him, as for his parents, Avelia always comes first. The young lady says that even if he had examined her and been the first to know about her illness, he would not have told everything frankly. Because it would shock Avelia. Million thinks that he previously had the feeling that Karina wanted to tell him something. He thought that it would be nice if the girl sincerely shared this with him. 
Leon remembers that she said that she was not important, so she got angry and screamed that it would be better if she didn't have younger ones. The girl remembers that on this day, her mother hit her for the first time. Leon came closer to the door and thought that it was not in his rules to eavesdrop, but he became interested. Hearing the conversation, the Duke thought that now he understood everything, because that smile was how excited she was when they went to the market, and her constant melancholy and all this because a high wall has been built around her. The Duke remembers that the girl asked to invite her again, and he thought that this was excellent, since he would listen to this request as much as he wanted. Sitting in the evening in the moonlight, Karina drew a picture and thought that all she had to do was color it. Looking at the paints, the girl says that she is missing something. However, she feels like she is using the creature she just drew. Karina thinks that she wants to help Million, because he sincerely cared about her and she doesn't want him to get hurt. The main character says that in the end, this is just one more thing that will be added to the death list, because her materials are running out and she is thinking about whether to ask Million for a favor. However, the girl thinks that she cannot ask him for such a thing, since she is the Count's daughter. Suddenly, the girl looked at the stone and remembered that if you give it to a weak person, he will become healthier. The young lady took the stone in her hands and thought about how cold it felt today, and she felt so calm inside. She suggests that it might be magic. Sitting in the carriage, Karina claims that she could go alone. However, Leon tells her that because of yesterday's unexpected incident, she was not able to look around and pick up winter clothes. However, the gentleman noticed that the young lady did not get up at dawn today, because he didn't feel her gaze on him. The girl reports that she was drawing, and that's why she went to bed late. Hearing this, Lion asks if she has enough materials for the paintings. Karina reports that she has pencils. Hearing this, the gentleman thought that they say that the master does not blame the materials. In the North, it's hard to get high-end or professional products like the ones Karina uses. The Duke says that if you look, you can buy something worthwhile. The main character says that she will buy it if possible, because it's not that important. And she thought that even at home, she had not used materials of this quality. Because if she bought high-grade materials, her father would find out. Million asks these how she feels the chains and offers to tell her, definitely, if she gets tired. Hearing this, the girl asks what then. The Duke replies that they will return home, of course, and he doesn't understand that such things need to be voiced. The young lady thought about how well she slept yesterday. Leon says that she is lucky, because a doctor who is well informed about the disease of art has come to see her, and it seems that his close friend will soon come too. The Duke says that the head of the family is Carlos, and he is interested in finding qualified specialists, and he sent him her drawing. Hearing this, the lady was very surprised, but the Duke calms her down and says that he is well versed in the disease of art and can help her. The main character does not understand how he could, at his own discretion, send her drawing to the head of the Carlos family. However, Lion does not understand what the problem is. Karina explains that it's a shame to send such low-level work. Million does not understand what is shameful in her picture. The girl says that she does not humiliate herself, but she is simply ashamed, and it is as if her personal diary was read. Hearing this, the Duke apologizes, because he did not think about it. Arriving at the boutique, they were met by the woman owner of the chiffon boutique, Aria. When the women introduced themselves to each other, the hostess said that she was a commoner, and therefore Karina could speak to her on a first-name basis. Leon says they need a few casual outfits and easy-to-wear clothes for work. Hearing this, the lady says that it's too much because she only needs work clothes. However, the Duke does not understand what she can do in such uncomfortable clothes. The woman asks what kind of work clothes the lady wants. Leon answers the clothes that the lady can wear while painting. He offers to carry all the most expensive things, and he invites the girl to choose whatever she wants. Arya suggests choosing a design first, and then they will adjust everything to size. The young lady does not understand why she needs so many things, because she won't be able to wear them for long anyway. The woman reports that Mrs. Karina needs to select her favorite among these models. The lady thought that this was not her first time visiting the boutique, but she had not been questioned as tactfully as here before. Suddenly the gentleman asks if the girl is okay and puts his hand on her body. He felt cool and asks for forgiveness because her hand is so cooling. Now she reports that everything is fine. It's just a first for her. So she was so tired. And I thought that she was crazy because she had gone crazy. Looking at the lady, the gentleman thought that everything was written on her face. He asks the girl if she likes something. Karina says that the things he chose are all beautiful. 
Leaving the boutique, Million reports that such purchases are not a problem for him, and he does not understand why she is so dissatisfied. The girl replies that she doesn't need so many, because this is the first time she has been offered to buy them all. Lion says that since she is so embarrassed, let her read that this is an apology for sending Duke Carlos her drawing. However, Karina thought that in any case, she would not be able to wear them all. The gentleman says that if there are so many outfits, then he invites the girl to wear them all, all the time. Karina thought that if he continued to be so nice to her, she would constantly regret it, and she thought that she should thank him somehow. Seeing the girl, the Duke asks if she is okay, and he says that there is absolutely nothing left to the store that Arya spoke about, and when they go there, they will immediately go home. Guy, ask if Karina is listening to him. Leon takes the girl by the hand and suggests they go quickly because they might be late. Upon entering the store, the girl smelled paint, and at that time, the gentleman thought that as soon as they entered, she immediately let go of his hand. The seller claims that they are not like ordinary people who come here. However, he is interested in the question of what led them to him. Karina invites the seller to show her creative materials. However, the man replies that there is no high-quality material here that would appeal to the lady, and he suggests leaving. Hearing this, the Duke asks in an angry tone if he refuses to sell the goods to them too. At this time, Karina states that they do not need high-end items, and paint and a flat brush will be enough for her. The salesman asks if the lady could show him her hand for a second. Suddenly, Lion asks what he is doing. However, the lady calms him down and says that everything is fine. The man asks if she is drawing accurately and asks for forgiveness, because he only wanted to check if the rich lady was here for fun. The seller informs them that everything is for sale here and invites them to take their time and look around. The man turns to the gentleman and asks for forgiveness for insulting his beloved, and he needed to look at her hand to understand whether she is an artist or not. Milayan claims that they are not in such a relationship. The man heard this and said that he understood, because apparently this girl has been painting for quite a long time and does not have a personal workshop. The gentleman says that she recently arrived here, but he is thinking about it. He offers the seller to prepare everything he needs, and the price is not important. The seller says it's good because she has the basic materials. The Duke suggests sending everything as soon as possible. Lion asks the salesman if he happens to be an artist. The man replies that he was once an artist until he lost his arm due to illness. The Duke asks him if this is not an accident of art. The man heard this and was surprised and wondered if he knew about her. The seller says that one day his fingers lost sensitivity and having hardened, stopped moving. Because he tried to draw with his left hand, but gradually it also began to turn to stone. However, when he moved north after that, the pain went away and his hand became warmer. Suddenly the lady screams that she has chosen everything. Looking at these colors, the Duke asks if this is enough. I, and at this time, the girl thought that she didn't have much money left. Million turns to the seller and tells him to prepare everything that they agreed on and offers to add this. The young lady was surprised when she heard this. Lion says that he will make a workshop for the girl. Since you have an estate, there is no suitable place where she could paint. Hearing this, the lady screams and suggests not to do this because she doesn't need to, and suddenly the girl faints, and at the same time, she felt that she was stuffy and hot, as if everything was burning inside. When the girl opened her eyes, she saw the master, and she says that everything is fine, because it was just difficult for her to breathe now, and that's why this happened. Lion says that Winston said she was tired. Hearing this, the girl realized that this was why she could not sleep well at night, and he says that from now on he will go to bed earlier. Million asks the lady if everything is true, because she averts her eyes and laughs when she lies. Hearing this, the girl thought that he was telling the truth. Karina asks if he couldn't have just left her. However, the guy replies that no, because all he has to do is turn away and she falls like that. The main character turns to the gentleman and invites him not to be so kind to her. Since he will care about her so much, it will be difficult for him when parting, and so they should be less kind to each other. The knights talk to each other and say that it's boring. Dark-haired guy, you tell him that he wanted to go with him to pacify evil. However, his friend claims that he is not at all lucky because he loses the bet every time. The knight invites his partner to open the gate so that the general can get right here. The surprised knight asks who this gentleman is. The man tells him that this is Mr. Ferial Carlos, which, according to rumors, is extremely capricious. However, it is not without reason, close friend of His Excellency, 
Karina says that she had difficulty getting out of bed, because Lion did not let her go out for all three days. The young lady sat down near the painting and looked at it, thinking that she also wanted to help the gentleman. After a while, the girl thinks that she has finally finished this way, but suddenly the girl saw something and screamed. Surprised, Million asks if Karina is okay since the mansion was shaking. However, opening the door to her room, he saw a girl who was holding back a large beast. Seeing the beast, the Duke invites Arena to leave. However, the girl restrains him and says that this beast is good. Million looked at the girl and saw that her eye color had changed, because the girl apologizes and asks if he's happy. However, the guy objects and says that he thinks that he is very suitable for her. The Duke wonders if Karina took advantage of the miracle, because he knows that every time he uses it, the disease of art gets worse. He asks the girl if she thought he was being kept in the dark. Leon suggests moving away from the beast and asks if it is dangerous. Karina claims that the beast is not dangerous. The girl says that she is very sorry because she did not expect that he would be so big and she'll pay for the repairs later. Million says she doesn't have to pay anything back because she didn't intend to do so. He asks the girl if her head hurts or if she is dizzy. He asks if she has a fever. The gentleman offers to take Gerda out of here and the girl agrees with him. Karina invites the beast to try to follow them. Seeing the damage the animals caused, the girl again reports that she will compensate for everything. Going outside, Karina pets Gerda and tells her that she shouldn't do that because the animal needs to be calmer. Million looked at the girl with the beast and said that he couldn't believe it. He asks Karina if she's afraid. Lion claims that even skilled knights get nervous, but she, on the contrary, looks calm. The main character explains that the fact is that in the whole world, it is the little girl who understands her better than anyone. At this time, the master thought that her soul was connected with the life that she had called upon through drawing. Lion asks why the girl chose Gerda out of all the monsters. Karina explains that she actually wanted to help him, and if she says that she thought it would be easier for him to know the weak points of the monsters, and if they don't run away, and asks if he will get angry. The Duke thought that the girl was talking to herself as if she were talking to herself. Million says that he did not ask her to help. However, the girl replies that she knows, but she would like the Duke not to be injured and to quickly suppress the attacks. Leon says that a girl does not need to sacrifice herself for others when she herself is not okay. However, he stopped mid-sentence. The main character claims that she did this not for the sake of others, but precisely for his sake. The guy was surprised when he heard this. However, the girl reports that this is exactly the case. The young lady says that if she had served Lion, the attack would have ended. And when they parted, he would have hugged her tightly. The main character thought that if he were at the end, which would come one day, then she could take away his warmth and would only leave with a smile and without regret. The girl thought it sounded too selfish and wondered if the Duke thought it was strange. The girl says that on this day, when she leaves the mansion, it will be as farewell words. Hearing this, Lion agrees, and instead, the incident with the monster will not happen again a second time. He claims that he doesn't need her help. Lady agrees with him and says that if she doesn't like it, then she won't. Hearing this, the Duke, surprised, explains that this is not what he meant. The servant informs His Excellency that Mr. Ferial Carlos has arrived. Arriving at his office, the Duke saw a guy who told him that he wanted to sneak away unnoticed, but he finally came. Carlos turning to the Duke, he says that they have not seen each other for a long time. Seeing the girl, he introduces himself by calling his name Ferial Carlos. The main character looked at him and thought that he was incredibly handsome. However, the lady wanted to say her name, but the guy said the girl's name instead. Ferial says that it is unexpected that a rough man's hand can express the joy of meeting. The Duke says that this is because they have not seen each other for a long time. However, Carlos asks if he is so happy. Why didn't he call him before and waited so long? Lion suggests sitting down and talking first. The guy with blonde hair reports that he saw the lady and this time he can forget. Carlos asks in surprise if she made the monster exactly the same as she saw earlier. And he doesn't understand why a monster. The main character explains that she wanted to find out the weak points of the new monster. And she was afraid that she would not be able to be useful in an attack. Hearing this, Carlos thought that the girl did this for the sake of Million. He asks where this monster is now. The Count replies that the monster is now on the training ground with the knights. However, Carlos says that he will not be able to believe it until he sees it for himself. Because the lady has a miracle of creativity. The Duke asks the gentleman if he can explain in more detail. Carlos says that this is the rarest and most powerful type of miracle. After all, regardless of whether it exists in the world or not, 
You just have to imagine it, and you can bring the idea to life. However, even if this person is of course, this is all just in words. Carlos thought that when he met Karina, he became convinced that she was dying. A miracle associated with the disease of art, let's not rush into this. Carlos turns to the girl and says that he has something for her. The girl was surprised when she heard this, but he put a letter from Count Leopold on the table. Carlos says that the letter was given to him when he went to Count Leopold to talk about Karina's illness. Hearing this, the main character remembers what she heard in her home. However, the girl squeezes her hands very tightly and wrinkles her dress. Million looked at the girl and thought that something was wrong. He tells her to calm down because everything is fine and he is there. The Duke took the sheet and says that if she wants, he will throw it out the gate. Carlos thought that he had not been far-sighted enough to accept this letter in a hurry, and he says that it seems to him that he has accepted a useless assignment. The blonde man asks Karina for an apology. However, the lady says that this is a matter that she should also know about. The letter says that her father heard that his daughter was in the North, and he doesn't understand what kind of fearless act this is. After all, they were engaged, but she didn't bother to think about the rumors that would spread. Reading the sheet, the main character says that, as expected, for her father, the family is much more important than her. He wrote that if Karina was dissatisfied with something, she should have told him, and she didn't necessarily need to alarm the whole family. After reading these lines, the girl asks if he listened to her at least once. Father writes that Avelia could not sleep because of worries, and therefore her condition worsened and he does not understand how the elder sister could do this. Karina asks if he thinks that Leah could get worse than her. Cheetah eye a letter in which it was written that he wrote all this in haste, and if she, the daughter, does not want to be expelled from the family, and the father suggests that she stop staining and take the name of their family. I read the letter, and the girl thought that her father did not believe the words about her illness until the very end. And to be honest, he wouldn't be able to accept it in that case. After all, it will annoy him. Carlos turns to Karina and asks if she is okay. However, the girl asks that it cannot be disposed of here. Lion says it doesn't matter. Hearing this, Karina asks for forgiveness, because the contents of the letter were expected. Suddenly, the main character felt her beast. However, the Duke restrains her and asks what happened. Looking at the main character, Carlos says that he did not know, because the mistress's creations are connected with her. However, he suggests it's better to go and check as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the knights are unable to calm the beast, because the monster is going berserk, and one of them screams so that they don't rush at the monster carelessly, and suggests focusing on defense. The main character screams and offers to wait. Suddenly Million grabs her and says that it is dangerous there, and he orders her to leave. However, Karina objects and says that this child is there for a reason, and she knows the way. Leon asks the knight what happened here. The knight says that they were surprised, because this creature was so easily abandoned. The beast was calm. However, the knight took the sword and said that since such a case occurred, they would recognize his weaknesses. Hearing this, the gentleman asks if they forgot that he told them to leave the beast alone. Million looks at the lady and apologizes, because it was his mistake and he feels guilty. Karina says that she is fine and will solve everything. Meanwhile, Carlos wondered if both of them were in their right minds and it seems to him that they have completely forgotten about him. The blonde guy says that this creature was created by Karina, and so that it can be dealt with without bloodshed. Carlos invites him to believe him, since he understands miracles better. Leon tells the knight to tell everyone to move away from Goethe. The duke approached the girl, looked at her and leaving, informs the knights that they were all ready. After that, Carlos approached the girl and said that he wanted to ask her something. The blonde guy asks how quickly the creatures that Karina created disappear. The girl replies that it's fast and it can be done in a few hours. However, the longest result is a day. Hearing this, the guy says that's great because it means that the liquidation won't be difficult. The main character approached the beast and said that everything was fine and invited him not to be afraid. At this time, the beast thought that let her do whatever she wants with him because even if something happens, he will protect her. After the beast left, the mansion was slightly destroyed. However, the duke says now is not the time. The main character objects and says that now, however, it's time to sum it up. And she realized this because she met kind people. Karina says that she does not need to compare her abilities with anyone else. After all, a person has appeared who highly appreciates her drawing. And at the same time, she does not need to hide her pain. The young lady says that she has met people who can honestly talk about their pain. After all, she deserves love. 
Karina thought that all she had to do was send a letter. Suddenly, Million comes into her room because he does not understand what the girl is doing since she does not respond to him. The main character asks if the cleaning is finished. The guy replies that they're mostly done and asks if this is a reply letter. Karina says that now she really has to give up her farewell words. After all, her parents will definitely be angry with her. Leon tells her to let them know. Because a child cannot choose his parents and he is born according to their wishes. The young lady says that they should be responsible for him. After all, their responsibility does not end with the fact that parents feed their children without worrying about money and give them warm beds. However, the gentleman says that Karina should not feel obligated if someone scolds her. He says that he will always be on her side. Hearing this, the girl thanks him, and she thought that he behaved exactly like her older brother, and Lion won her heart. The Duke asks if she can give him some time, and he invites the girl to go with him. Arriving in the room, the main character was surprised, and Lion says that this is her art workshop. However, she cannot compare with the grace of the South, and this is his gift, and invites the girl not to feel obligated. This time, Karina thought that when she lived in the Count's house, she didn't even have a decent workshop, because her room was in the corner, so no matter the day or night it was always dark. That is why the environment there was not suitable for painting. The girl looked at the room and thought that everything here was like in a dream, and this is definitely something more valuable than any gift she has ever received. However, she does not understand why her soul hurts so much. The Duke asks if she likes it. Karina says that he asked her to accept with an open soul. However, Lion claims that it is just a gift. The main character reports that she cannot give him anything in return. Hearing this, Million claims that he doesn't need anything. The Duke says that Herta, whom she created, was of great help to him. However, the girl claims that they decided that she would pay him later. Karina talks about how Gerda has hurt people along the way and needs to repay the cost of her destruction. Karina thanks Lion for removing such responsibility from her. After all, she now doesn't have to worry about not having enough materials. She says that there is enough light in the room, and therefore she can draw at any time. The main character says that she is very sorry, since there are only six months left. Million says that if she wants, she can stay here for a longer period. And even after returning to the county, she can come here and write. Karina reminds us that they initially agreed only for a year, because he will probably have a new man, and so she won't be able to come and go as she pleases. Hearing this, the Duke was surprised and said that even if so, then she will do it at any time. The girl objects and thanks him for telling her this. Million reports that tomorrow the owner of the art store will visit him and invites the girl to tell him if she needs anything. And the Duke says that it's time for him to go. Leon thinks about what the girl said, because she really is thinking of leaving the estate on time. However, from her point of view, it should be natural. After all, she, like him, was forced into this engagement. The Duke thinks that now is really not the time to conquer the girl. Suddenly, Lion thinks that his thoughts are always occupied with Karina. At this time, Carlos asks Malayan what he is thinking about, that his face is so distorted. Hearing this, Lion responds by asking what he is doing here. Carlos replies that he is not here for him, but for Karina, since Penn said that she is here. The blonde man reports that he heard about this from Winston. He asks if he can check her condition in person and see the work. Million agrees, because he will take good care of her, and says that Carlos knows more about the disease of art than he does. The blonde man replies that he had no intention of doing this carelessly. Leon says that he is leaving because he has business. Hearing this, Carlos wonders what such a busy person could be doing here. At this time, being in her room, Karina thought about what she had said wrong to the gentleman. The girl understands that she is actually very pleased when Million says this. Suddenly, the girl's thoughts are interrupted by Carlos, asking if he can come in. The lady agrees. As the blonde man enters the room, he asks how she is feeling. The girl replies that it's normal and thanks him for his help with Gerda. However, Carlos says that there is no need for gratitude since he was only talking. The man says that Winston told him about her art disease, and if she doesn't mind, then he would like to talk to her about it. Karina offers to sit down and talk about it. And at that time, I thought about whether he really told everything. And the girl remembers that she asked Winston not to tell anyone that her time was limited. Carlos tells the truth that Winston was not the first person he learned about the disease from, because it was also difficult for him to speak, but he was persistent. The blonde man claims that he immediately realized that she was sick with the disease of art, and this is thanks to the ancient records left by the Carlos family. The man claims that the Carlos family has been funding artists for a long time, 
and among them there were figures like her who possessed the miracle of creation. Hearing this, Karina was surprised, since she did not even know about the existence of such a disease just six months ago. Carlos assures that this is quite normal, since miracles are extremely rare. And, besides, her abilities are very close to divine. The man says that it is usually difficult for a creation created with the help of a painting to continue for a whole day, and besides, there are no records of the creation of such large monsters. Karina was surprised, because she did not even suspect that her abilities were so amazing. The main character wonders if all people, artists, and creations that possessed a miracle gave their lives in return. Carlos says that all people who possessed a miracle of creation, for this reason, fell ill with the disease of art and died when they were not even 30, because they had no attachments in life and only pictures, and the more they painted, the faster they lost their minds. Using one's blood and flesh as consumables meant complete readiness to leave this life. Hearing this, the young lady thought about what she understood, and if she needed to. However, Carlos says that he wants to help the girl, and therefore invites her to tell him everything without hiding anything from now on. If she feels any of the symptoms he named, she should tell him. The lady agrees. The blonde man is talking about how, in addition to losing their sanity, people become more sensitive and emotional as time goes on. And besides, they begin to draw tirelessly, as if under hypnosis. Other entries mention that that patients describe their creations as the only one who understands them, because I think that's all they have. Hearing this, Karina says that everything is true. After all, as time went on, she became more emotional and continued to draw pictures as if under hypnosis, but she could not stop. And no one wanted to know what was in her soul, because her creation understood her better than anyone. Carlos says that he is not going to reproach her, and if she runs away, then in the end, she will be the one who will have a hard time. The man says that if she puts her anger, sadness, or loneliness into drawing, she will regret it later. Karina asks if he knows that her time is limited. Carlos says he knows and asks if she's thinking about quitting painting. The main character objects because she only has it. The blonde man says that he understands her because she pours out everything in her paintings just as he did in music. Carlos says that since childhood, he passionately devoted himself to playing the flute every day and his parents even put him under surveillance. However, after this, he of course learned to avoid surveillance and continued to play. The blonde man says that it is not so easy to get rid of the creation that brings such pleasure. He asks the lady if she minds, then he can ask her to continue. Karina is interested in what favor he wants to ask her. Carlos says that he wants to look at her paintings. However, more precisely, he wants to see how she uses her abilities. The girl says that she just wanted to send a letter to the county and thinks that maybe she should draw a door leading there. The blonde-haired man, looking at her drawing, thought that she immediately started the painting without a sketch. The girl says that she wants to draw a picture quite quickly. Carlos thought that this was incredible because it was really impossible to take your eyes off her, and he had never met anyone with the same amount of strength as her and possessed the same graceful skills. The blonde man thinks that it feels like he is standing in the middle of a beautiful landscape because her talent is really charming and magnificent. Carlos does not understand how he can express to her the feelings that overwhelm him. Meanwhile, Karina is drawing and thinks that her chest is heavy, but she still needs to draw a little. Suddenly, she heard the sound of a flute, and Farrell played this instrument. After all, Melody is so warm and calm. The girl was drawing and thought that when she heard this music, it became easier for her to breathe and the warmth became so light. It's amazing for the lady, because this is the healing power that the Carlos family has. The tone of the melody is truly beautiful and enchanting, and the guy plays like he doesn't feel the ground. Karina reports that she has finished and says that this melody fascinates her. Suddenly, Carlos approaches her and tells her that he thinks he just fell in love with her. Hearing this, the main character was surprised. The guy asks what she thinks about the music. The girl replies that she is truly gorgeous. The blonde man says he watched her draw and tried to improvise because he always carries a flute with him. Hearing this, Karina was surprised, because it turns out that he composed this melody right now. Carlos says that this melody came to his mind while he was looking at her work, and she was so beautiful. The girl thanks him. The guy says that this is an honest assessment and suggests that she not worry too much. After all, her miracle requires some time to activate. Karina says that she thinks so too, since the miracle is activated immediately after the painting is completed. The guy thinks for a moment and asks if this means they can get to Leopold County through this door. And I thought that this was true. Perhaps this was divine power. 
The main character says that it's true and asks if he will go with her too. The guy says he will go. Opening the door with the lady, Carlos asks if the county uses this room. Karina saw the room and thought that it had not changed at all. And she says that this is her room. Hearing this, the guy was surprised and asked for forgiveness because he thought that it was a little different from an ordinary lady's room. The main character says that everything is fine since his confusion is not unreasonable. After all, ladies usually have luxurious rooms. The girl reports that her younger sister has just such a room, which is all decorated with lace and colorful curtains, and there are many dolls in it. Other ladies' rooms are similar to hers. No is Zatogo, but because she was caring for her sister, she could not make friends and play with them. Karina says that this is why she is a little disappointed, because she really wanted to make friends, although with someone. Carlos calms the girl down and tells her not to be sad, since she has him, very all. After all, they know each other and even left the estate together. The guy approaches the girl and asks if they are friends. And besides, he knows what the situation is and can advise her. However, being artists, they can easily understand each other and, if they have free time, walk together. Karina says in surprise that she doesn't know what friends should do and asks if this suits him. Carlos says that, of course, it's never too late to find out, and he shakes the girl's hand. Karina says that she hopes they will get along, and she says that since they are now friends, she can ask what interests her. Carlos agrees with her and asks what she wants to know. The lady asks how he knew what rooms the other ladies had. After all, you usually can't go into the room unless they're engaged. The main character talks about what it means he has a fiancé, and in this case, whether their friendship will be a burden to them. The blonde guy says he doesn't have a fiancé, and he says that the girl misunderstood him because he only saw them at tea parties. Karina says that she understood him and believes him. In this case, Carlos suggests going and delivering the letter. The young lady says that she was actually just going to leave the letter here, and as he sees it, it is unknown when they will discover him. The girl says that she would like to do this as quietly as possible, since there are so many servants walking around here. The guy I'm communicating with is that he can help her with this. Hey, invites the girl to open the window and cover her ears. The maid asks if her friend seems to her that the atmosphere in the estate is overly oppressive. However, the other girl replies that she really has lost her breath. The maid asks if the maid came to see the masters at lunchtime, because the owner practically does not speak to madam, and Mr. Infrick does not return home at all. The maid says that Mrs. Avelia is so depressed that she hardly eats, and Mr. Ferdin continues to hover in his thoughts. The maid wonders where the eldest mistress has gone, and she thinks that she should return as soon as possible. After all, others are worried about her. Suddenly the maids heard an unfamiliar melody, and they saw that someone had opened the window in the eldest lady's room. However, the maids suddenly wanted to sleep, and they don't understand what the reason is, because this has never happened before. Karina looked at the window, and for her it was incredible, because she did not know that he could lull him to sleep. Carlos says that, unlike her gift, it is just a trick, because he thinks that everyone in the house has fallen asleep, and so she can meet the person she missed. The main character says that she doesn't have that. Hearing this, the guy was surprised and asked if the letter she had prepared was a farewell letter. Karina says that he said everything correctly, because in that letter, she asks her family to pretend that she does not exist. After all, the Count will not believe that she was sick until he sees her dead body. And when he sees her cold corpse, he will greatly regret it, and only then will he become furious. The girl remembers that her father always told her that she never told, and until the very end, she only tormented her parents. The lady says that she knows what her father will say at that time, because he never even looked at her when she asked, while alive. Walking down the corridor, Karina saw her younger sister and screamed her name. The guy calms her down and says that her sister is fine because she just fell asleep like the others. Seeing her sister, the lady thought that, thank God, she looked healthy. And she asks Ferial to help him carry her to the bed. When they carried Abel into the room, they laid her on the bed. Karina sat down next to the girl, and at that time, Carlos saw the drawings. The blonde guy says that they need to go. However, near the door, he asks the girl that she does not have a very good relationship in the family, since it is not even from the one she would miss. The lady says that everything is not so bad, because in the eyes of other people, they, without a doubt, look like a happy and harmonious family. It's just that no one knows that this harmony was achieved, thanks to someone's sacrifice. Karina reports that this is all because she is an obedient, 
ordinary second daughter who has no worries. After all, Avelia is sick. Infric always brings good news until Ferdin disappears into trouble, and she cannot stay here. The girl reports that she wants to live the remaining time for herself, and asks the guy if he understands. Karina says that she wants to leave her creations in this world, and not like Avelia's sister, the eldest daughter of Leopold County or Karina Leopold. And how is Karina an artist? The main character says that for this, she needs to forget everything connected with this place. After some time, Cassius does not understand what happened at the estate. After all, something strange happened. He asks the maids to explain this. The butler explains that the fact is that all the residents of the estate, including him, fell asleep at the same time. And according to the results of the survey, everyone confirmed that they did not remember anything after hearing the melody. Cassius claims that these are all empty words, and he asks the butler what kind of letter this is. The butler reports that no letters have arrived to the county today. The duke asks if anyone was hurt or if objects disappeared. The servant says that he checked everything, but did not find anything strange. Cassius looked at the sheet and saw a familiar seal, but there are no identifying marks on the envelope, and he does not understand how this letter got here, and it seems to him that there is no special mechanism that corresponds to the efforts made for delivery. Having opened the sheet, the duke thought that the handwriting was very familiar, and he did not understand who the letter was from. The first line said that she was sure that if I started like this, he would first be concerned about who she was. After reading the line, Cassius thought that the person who wrote seemed to know him very well. Further on the sheet, it was written that if she had a chance, she would say a lot of things. However, now all this makes no sense because she is sick, and so now she will not return to this estate, and she suggests that this letter be considered her last farewell. The duke thought that this letter from his daughter with whom he had lost contact six months ago, was laconic and harmonious. And this letter was full of strength, determination, and composure, because her name will sound from the borders of the far north to their central lands. Cassius understands that he must think about it so that she can be right. However, he thinks that his daughter wrote this letter under threats, because he always said that she would not become someone in this family. The girl writes that she believes that she has always diligently followed his words, so now let him do her the return favor. She suggests that they no longer discredit her name because it will definitely become famous in the future. Because she endured it for a long time, it finally ended. The main character reports that she now feels nervous and endures the prospect of unknown love. She explains that there is a world in which the main one is not able, feed on, or infric, but only she. Karina writes that in their world, she is not afraid of the fact that they can raise a hand against her or throw her out of the house. And Ved, that's because they love you. The girl writes that there are also affectionate reproaches when the words, because they love you, are not used as an excuse. After reading the sheet, the Duke cries out that this devil's daughter does not understand how much she owes for her upbringing. At the end of the letter, the girl asks one question and says that she really didn't say anything. After all, from childhood, I was a kind child who never cried. The daughter writes that she was not silent and was tired of talking. She says that if her father wants to meet her, then let him come to the North himself, because she has no need to leave there. She offers to do whatever she wants with her death. The Duke, in a rage, tells the butler to immediately contact the Count, because Karina must return immediately. The servant says that the path to the North is closed because the checkpoint is not working. Cassius says it doesn't matter because he learned something strange, and these cannot be Karina's words. The gentleman does not believe that his daughter is terminally ill, and how can she tell her parents such a thing? The butler informs the gentleman that Lady Karina may indeed be ill, however. Upon hearing this, the gentleman says that he wants to anger him even more. The servant says that a few months ago, he was informed that sickening sounds were coming from Lady Karina's room. The gentleman says that he should have told him about it right away. The butler explains what he said, but each time the gentleman was busy with urgent matters and told him to repeat it later. Cassius says that there is no point in reporting something like this every time, because the eldest mistress said that she is already an adult and will take care of herself. And, however, in any case, such cases must be reported. Suddenly the girl enters the room and Chaya Dosh Avelia e Slushit Razgavor Atza, and says that the sister will not return. Meanwhile, Karina, sitting in her room, thought that she only told her sister to be healthy, but she was so stupid, thinking that she could forget. After all, they spent most of their time together in this house. 
The main character thought that initially she wanted to deliver the letter with the help of this child, a bird that she calls her painting's children. The girl tells the bird to take care of it and throw this wallet away where she will never see it again. The lady thought that now this was really the end. The next day, Duke Million asks Ferial what he forgot here. The blonde guy says that Karina invited him here. The girl explains that she invited him because she thought that it was necessary to celebrate the day when she and Ferial became friends. She says that she thought that the Duke would not mind and apologizes if anything is wrong. Lion talks about not needing an apology. However, when the lady looked at him, she thought that she was wrong because he looked unhappy. Carlos asks what their plans are for today. Million replies that he has nothing special. The blonde guy says that Karina was planning to work out with him today. Hearing this, the Duke became very angry and there was a skirmish of words between them. Suddenly, the main character smiled and thereby caused misunderstanding in the guys. Surprised, Carlos asks what made her laugh so much. The girl explains that the two of them are just good friends. Leon asks if they are funny. The lady says that that's not the point. It's just that she's with them. It's good to calmly have a conversation, laugh, and eat. Karina says that the person you spend such small moments with is none other than Million. Hearing this, Lion says that if she says so, that she feels good, then the rest is not important to him. However, he suggests that she not overwork herself, because if she feels unwell, she should not think about him and return to herself. Karina agrees with Lion and thinks that she really likes him. The knight asks what Million's orders are today. The warrior says that he must drive away for a while to check information about Gert, and he says that everything depends on the situation because he may not return until tonight. The guy invites the knight to wait in the garden until His Excellency returns. Karina tells a million to be careful on the road, and at that time I thought that he should not leave, because she cannot speak out against it, because the war against monsters is extremely important. Lion invites the girl to wait just a little, because this time he will bring her a better Karen. The girl thanks the gentleman and says that if she has the Charon, she might feel calmer, and he says that this is because Million prays for it. Hearing this, Carlos says that he is glad, because it has its effect. However, in his thoughts, he smiles and thinks that their thoughts are still the same, because this insensitive blockhead smiles like that. Ferial wonders if they didn't say that they were going to break off the engagement. At this time, the girl thought that the tea was over and she says that she is a little tired and will go upstairs to rest. The Duke invites the girl to take her to her room. However, the young lady objects because she was simply tired because she drank warm tea, and besides, her room is close and she will get there herself. After all, tea hour is not over yet. Lion says that he doesn't care and suggests calling the maid. However, the girl replies that everything is fine and she will go herself. When the main character left Million about the fact that it seems to him that the girl is very worried, and asks when Carlos is going to leave, Duke Ferial wonders whether it is too much to ask such questions to a friend who came here at his request. However, Lion reports that he could not come simply because of his request, since Carlos was interested in looking at the owner of the paintings. Million says that Carlos is cunning because he contributed unfinished work. After all, it was a picture that even such a newcomer was waiting for the completion of, as he chose for this reason, him, her. However, regarding Karina's illness, her condition raises concerns. Carlos remembers that the lady said that she should first forget everything connected with this place. And since her time is limited, she asked him to keep it a secret from Million, because she doesn't want to leave behind bad memories. The blonde guy says that he hopes Lion will understand, because he can't say anything more. Carlos is interested in what Sharon is because it makes Karina feel calmer. The Duke explains that this is a special mineral from the North that is rare and appears when a monster is killed. After all, in the North, there is an ancient belief that if you give it to a sick person, he will feel better. The blonde guy asks in surprise how long he believes in superstition. Hearing this, Lion reports that in the North, there is a belief that if you point a finger at a person, he will fall off and asks if he should show it to him. The Duke asks why Carlos suddenly decided to study. The guy replies that it's a secret. This is when the maid asks the main character if she is okay. The lady explains that she just slipped up and everything is fine. However, the maid asks if she should call the doctor. The girl objects and says that she will just rest. The maid insists that this will not happen since the owner told them to call the doctor right away, even if her pain is minor. The main character understands that she won't get through this so easily and tells her to call Dr. Winston. When the doctor came, 
He examined the girl and said that things had worsened greatly. However, it seems that the disease is not progressing rapidly, but her condition has worsened compared to last time. And he says that he cannot solve the main problem and asks for forgiveness. Karina says it's okay because she already knew it, and he says that the doctor has no need to apologize. The doctor says that she will have to take stronger medications than now. The main character asks Winston that she will now feel sick more often, because she doesn't want Million to see this ugly part of her. The doctor says she will probably continue to gag, but she shouldn't stop eating, because her body is now like a sandcastle, which is sure to be hit by a wave that has frozen for a moment. Winston reports that her condition will gradually worsen, and therefore she needs to eat right and take care of herself, no matter what. Karina asks in surprise if this is the only thing she should be careful about. The doctor says she needs to be careful about many things, but what matters most is her desire to live. The girl thought that her time was running out, but now she did not want to wait for death as before. After all, every moment is worth living happily for everyone to see, because she will show her family what kind of person she is and create happy memories for Million, she will steadfastly part with them. The doctor suggests not to worry, because he does not want Lion to feel remorse in vain, and he asks if she has a place where it hurts more. Karina reports that her heart felt normal all day, but suddenly her condition worsened and it became difficult for her to breathe. She says that sometimes it hurts a lot and it would be better if it exploded. The girl explains that she just feels that way. Winston says that he understood her because when his eyes hurt, he also wants to tear them out. And if the symptoms of the patients were the same, or if each record showed the same thing, the correct solution could be found. But, unfortunately, this is not the case. The main character asks for forgiveness for becoming a useless burden for him and Ferial. And if everything had been as planned, the two of them would have known nothing about it. Hearing this doctor, he objects, because his business is to save people because a doctor who forces a patient to hide his illness can no longer be a doctor. Hearing this, Karina agrees with him, and the doctor says that she doesn't need to apologize to him. Suddenly, Ferial enters the room and says that he thinks the girl is not feeling very well. Carlos says that he has a question for her, and he would like to ask it, and at the same time he heard it. The doctor says that he has things to do, and the examination is completed, and so he is already leaving. Karina thanks the doctor for coming and he suggests that she stay in bed, since there is something else to worry about. Winston says that he wants to say something before he leaves. The doctor tells her not to give up. After all, thinking that she can live can help her live longer. The girl thanked Winston, because now she won't think about wanting to die faster. And she says that, on the contrary, she regrets such thoughts. And if she had realized faster that there was such a world, and if this had happened much earlier, she would have left her old one. The main character says that she feels stupid because she realized this only when she was on the edge. Karina asks Ferial what he was interested in asking. The blonde guy says that her miracle is completely different from the others. However, there is still something that he cannot understand. And this is the speed at which her illness develops, which seems abnormally high to him. The guy explains that the reason creators live so little is because they invest too much in the miracle. After all, they know that the price for this is their own life, but even those who work every day on the miracle have created more and lived longer than she. Carlos says that he wanted to ask if she knew about the prohibitions that exist when creating a miracle. Karina says that she doesn't know anything. Hearing this, the guy thought that if she was doing art, she couldn't help but know it. After all, this would not have happened if Karina had enjoyed the well-deserved love for herself as a daughter and had not grown up in conditions where no attention was paid to her if only she had an art teacher. Carlos says that he thinks that it is worth clearly explaining to the girl what the disease of art is, because one might easily think that the incurable disease of art manifests itself suddenly. However, in reality, this is the price for the miracles that were performed previously, and especially this price for miracles that crossed the line. The guy says that, for example, he can heal severe wounds. However, it cannot help people who do not want to take treatment and that is its limit. After all, people who do not have this limit can work miracles as they please. The fair-haired guy says that people like them are said to be sick with the disease of art. In addition, a creator who is susceptible to the disease of art should not violate prohibitions. Hearing this, Karina asks in surprise what is included in them. Carlos explains that first of all, there is no need to go against the laws of nature and do not raise the dead. Don't turn back time. Secondly, you cannot create people, 
the creation of plants, animals, or demons is not important. However, only God can create people, and His powers cannot be interfered with. The guy says that finally, a miracle cannot be used for murder. After all, this is everything that people who have a power close to omnipotent, which is called a miracle, should not do. Karina is interested in what will happen if you break the prohibitions. Ferial. Explain that for this you will have to pay the price of death or the loss of a part of the body. The girl says that the end will come with death, but if she becomes disabled, she will never be able to draw. Carlos asks the lady if she ever tried to do what he just talked about. The girl replies that she didn't do anything like that. Hearing this, the guy thought that she had said the right thing, because if she had broken the prohibitions, she would not have been able to survive. However, he says that in this case, he still cannot understand her words about the miracle. After all, the price is too high compared to the number of paintings painted. Carlos says that there are people who painted more than her and crossed the threshold of 30 years, and he doesn't understand if there is another reason. Karina asks the guy if he thinks that if the reason is found, then she will be able to recover. The lady thought that there was no cure, but she had something to say, and she says that she said nonsense. Having heard this guy, he objects, because the cure, however, is unknown, and he cannot say with certainty that, knowing the cause, it can be cured. However, he was thinking about how to slow the progression of her disease, although the method raises questions. Carlo says the trick is to stop moving the brush right before finishing the work. Unlike music, where a miracle happens during the performance, if you tear off the brush before finishing the painting, the work cannot be called perfect. The girl understands that such a thing cannot be finished. The guy explains that if she does everything possible, she will give the unfinished painting to him. Carlos says that, as he promised, he will make her the most famous artist. Because with her abilities, it won't be difficult. Karina says that she doesn't have much left, but this is a great offer. Sivetlovolosi Paranji speaks about the disease of art and asks, Is it true? Is it possible to correct it? However, they themselves decided to open the door of the narrow dungeon and move forward. Therefore, they will happily go with her and stay by her side until the end. Carlos reports that, of course, he is not talking about being overprotective. And if she falls, he will lend a helping hand. And if she loses her way, he would like to find a way out together. However, the girl does not understand why he is the one. The guy explains that people who move forward on their own are beautiful, and he likes everything beautiful. Karina thinks that Million is very late, and she is worried about this. The girl reflects that nothing bad happened. Poskolku on at pravilsha radi formal nogo podchinenya to ona dolchina esche nemnogo ego podoshdat. However, the girl understands that now is not the right time, and she needs to finish writing what she wants to do. After all, thanks to Ferial, she made a friend, and therefore wants to give a gift to her loved one. The lady thought it would be nice to give him a ready meal and a cuddle. However, she understands that this is not what she is talking about. At this time, Million knocked, but there was no answer, and he thought that the girl might have lost consciousness, and he decided to enter. The girl, sitting in the room, thinks that just from imagining all this, her temperature rose. However, suddenly she heard Lion's voice speaking to her and asking if she doesn't worry about anything now. He says he knocked, but the lady didn't hear. Karina says that she is lost in thought and asks for forgiveness. She asks if he has figured it all out. The Duke reports that he will now have to go deeper. The surprised girl asks where else next. Leon explains that before carrying out a real punitive campaign, everything needs to be scouted out, so he came to visit her. The guy says that the girl looks pale and asks if she is okay. Karina reports that she is fine, but she was a little tired, but after a little rest, she returned to normal. She says Winston took care of her too. Million, hearing this, says that's great. He says that it doesn't matter and suggests that the girl don't overwork herself and have a good rest, and if she needs anything, then let her tell Fur. The main character agrees with the gentleman and tells him to also be careful on the road. Leon says that they will meet in two days, and if he hurries, they will meet in the evening. At this time, the lady thought that she would not have time to prepare dinner, and even if. If she hurries up, she will only finish it before evening. However, the girl reports that she will be waiting for him, after talking with Karina, the Duke saddled his horse and rode very quickly, because he always keeps his promise. The knight reports that the general is driving too fast. However, the knights cannot keep up with him, because he does not understand why there is a rush, and suggests slowing down. 
The Duke says that he wants to be back tomorrow by noon and therefore suggests speeding up. Millian says that he will lead independently from the beginning of the formation and invites the knights to follow him quickly. Leon thought that Karina would be waiting for him and they should see each other for lunch in two days. The Duke invites the knights to make a gathering place and have a snack. However, if a second group comes, they will unite. The North is the land of monsters, and God has taken pity on these lands, and he sent a hero into the world to drive out the monsters. This hero was the progenitor of the Million family. But starving in the summer, in the winter, the expelled demons go crazy, are released into the villages, and therefore until spring there is no protection for the residents. In the north of the people is the responsibility of the landowner. The duke remembers the girl's words that after the punitive campaign is completed, and if she is useful, and she is interested in whether he will hug her before their parting. He thought that it would be better if there were many people here who possessed Charon. This time, Winston arrived at the mansion and Karina, and he is interested in whether she's waiting for his excellency. The doctor reports that the girl knows when the gentleman will return, but she's still waiting for him in such cold weather. Karina says that she knows that the gentleman will be back for tomorrow's lunch, but this does not calm her down at all. However, she decided to take a walk to change her mood. The girl says that the doctor was not worried about her because she did not forget about the chalet and put on warm clothes. Winston says that the lady has changed recently. Hearing this, the main character wonders if it is true that she has changed a lot. The doctor says she looks much happier than before, which makes him happy. The lady reports that this is true, since she has been so happy lately that she has even done things that she could not do before. Winston asks what she has done. The girl explains that she wrote a letter to the county telling them not to think about her anymore. And these are still just plans, but she wants to return the money to them. Because, after living some more time, make them famous with the help of paintings that they have not seen. Karina says that she will return the money to her family for the clothes and piece of bread that they gave her. Because in this way, he will let them know that nothing binds them. She says that she does not deny that she kept it to herself for a long time, thereby continuing the pain. But this does not mean that her parents can tell her how to live. Hearing this, the doctor says that the girl is right, since her parents are only her protectors, not her masters. Children spend equal time with their parents, but they end up in different places. Someday, the child will grow up, and the parents will have no choice but to watch after him. Winston says that the child must begin to live his own life, because such a child will return to his parents and take their elderly hands into his own again, because they were good parents to him. The doctor took the lady's hands and says that he is sorry, because her parents are not like that. Karina says that it's okay, because now it doesn't matter. The girl thought that even after receiving an apology, now it was impossible to recoup the time spent. Since she now regrets every second, and she doesn't want to be associated with her past. The main character thinks that now she lives only looking forward, because she found her peaceful spring. At this time, in the forest, a knight reports that His Excellency is announcing an order. Leon says that tomorrow, at dawn, they will go deeper into the forest. After all, their first goal is Gert, since the weak point of this monster is under the claw, and he suggests that whoever can rush there. Million reports that the rest should take possession of the area under the belly, which is not covered by the shell. After all, this is another weak point. The Duke says that secondly, they need to take a closer look at their habits and not go far alone, and if problems arise, they should return to their strong point. Captain Subjet O Tomchto Esli Ik Lives will be in danger, and he suggests that they focus on survival rather than following orders. If they see the funeral, then let them bring it to him. Lion Velid Ostalnim knights return to their posts on the night watch. The surprised knight asks why the general needs this. After all, he usually doesn't care, and this is an engagement. Hearing this, the general objects and says that enough empty talk. Suddenly, millions saw the beast and thought that he was lucky because he was right next to them. He screams and says that everyone has dispersed and surrounded the monster since there is only one of it. Suddenly the knight felt strange vibrations and Gert became larger. The knight screams and says to increase the distance and not let them grab them from behind, and he screams that he didn't agree that way. However, the general quickly wounded one of the monsters, and at this time, the knight thought that they had called for reinforcements and were blocking their escape route. And this is an action that is unthinkable for a beast without reason. Lion reports that he found his monster, because I was wondering if the real Gert's weaknesses were true. 
The general invites the knights to aim at the points he spoke about earlier, and if you aim, then you are the only weak point. Suddenly the knight cries out that Gerda is behind the general. At this time, the servant invites Karina to go inside. The girl agrees and says that she is not sure whether her selfish desire to see Million a little earlier will not get her. After all, this is a needless inconvenience. Fen says that definitely not, since the soldiers of the Citadel also wanted to meet with her. He offers to bring her luggage first, and then they will calmly wait for His Excellency inside. Suddenly, they heard a cry that a pack of Gert had appeared, and everyone needed to be on alert. Hearing this, Fen says that he will go check the situation and invites the girl to wait for him in the carriage. Karina agrees and thought that there shouldn't be a disaster. Suddenly, the girl felt pain and thought that this was normal, since she needed to be patient a little after all. The main character heard a cry that now there was neither a general nor a leader in place and the fortress wall could collapse. The girl thought that Million would definitely return, but for now she needed to gain time. She looked at the suitcase and thought about what if she drew. She must have stopped painting Gerda earlier because the picture is not completed. After a few seconds, the girl found her unfinished drawing and thought that she only needed to paint over her eyes. However, this is not enough and I use my blood and life. Million, shouting, orders everyone to draw their bows and be ready for defense. Because Hertha is advancing, he orders us to endure at all costs. At this time, the doctor asks if the knight sent a carrier pigeon to his excellency. The knights say that they immediately did this, but there is no answer yet, since there are too many of them and defense is the best solution. The doctor thought that it was becoming dangerous here and he needed to quickly take care of Mrs. Karina. He shouts to the knights to step aside. And suddenly, the wall collapses inside the castle and it turns out to be Gerda. The warriors say that they are attacking her. However, the lady says to wait and tells them, looking from behind the beast, that she is good because she has errands. The main character asks Gerda if she can hold off the other Gertas until Million arrives. A surprised Winston tells Mistress Karina that her arm is injured. Seeing this, the girl says that everything is fine, because she accidentally scratched herself. The knight tells them to take a look as this monster is different from the others. Hearing this, Karina was surprised, and she asks the knight if he heard anything. After all, in order to conquer Hertha, they need to be finished off, and Gerda says that if she doesn't find it, she will die because she needs to eat the rest. Karina asks where everyone else is, however. The knight reports that that monster just ate his fellow tribesmen, and he tells the lady that this is normal. Suddenly, the doctor noticed that the mistress was not there, and at that time, the girl ran away and said that she was different from them because her mistress was different. Karina, catching up, asks Gerda if she can escape. The girl invites the beast to stop and comes closer to the monster and says that, unlike them, she asks who she ate. However, the main character does not understand what she said and what these words mean about her mistress. The girl says that Goethe didn't actually say that. Suddenly Karina hears the voice of Million, who calls her name while screaming. The girl offers to wait, since Goethe is her creation. Hearing this, the Duke was surprised, and the Beast said that he should let her mistress go. Surprised, the guy asks what Karina is talking about. However, the girl explains that she drew this Goethe, but her eye color did not change. However, this is impossible. The servant informs His Excellency Carlos that the owner has returned and is looking for him and is waiting for him in the garden. The blonde guy says that he is already on his way. And he says, after all, he told Karina that he would come for dinner, and now his conscience is tormenting him. Seeing them, Carlos says that his dear friends have returned, and he thought that he wanted to go home. Sitting at the table, Ferial thought that he was afraid to breathe, and if this continued, he would die from lack of air. The guy offers to look into this situation. Karina asks how they would know that the situation was urgent, because they had to be restrained somehow until Million returned. The girl asks for forgiveness for breaking her promises, and at that time, I thought that I probably shouldn't tell him that she used blood. I heard that Lion reports that this is not her mistake. After all, on the contrary, it is he who should apologize, because if he had hurried, this would not have happened. The Duke says that in future, we need to be more careful. After all, Fen told him that Karina was injured, and he asks the girl if she is okay. The main character replies that nothing serious happened. At this time, Ferial looked at them and said that they look good together. However, he suggests returning to the topic of conversation because Karina could not get rid of Gerda the old way. The girl explains that she has tried several times, but it seems to her that it is beyond her control. 
Fortunately, the monster is listening to her for now, and Gerda also promised that she would not misbehave. Carlo says that she has no proposals, because this is the first time he has heard that creation is getting out of control. The lady reflects that if she thinks about it like that, then it seems to her that she found something and ate it, because before she had never experienced such pain, which made everything swim before her eyes. Suddenly the servant screams that they should quickly call the doctor. Excited Lion asks what hurts and where does Karina hurt? He screams and asks when Winston will come. The main character reports that she is fine and does not need a doctor and offers to talk to her. Leon asks if the lady can take the medicine she was prescribed earlier. The girl thought that she was in so much pain, as if someone had squeezed her heart and seemed to want to crush it. The Duke invites Karina to be patient a little longer. However, the lady cries out that she is in great pain and should not die like this. The excited million suggests that the girl not to worry, since she will not die, because he will not allow it. The Duke thought that he was sure that his soul would not burst from her screams, and he invited the girl to scream about her pain. The main character cries, call his name, and says that she is in great pain as her heart jumps out of her chest. Million says that Winston will arrive soon and invites the girl to try to hold out a little longer. From pain, the lady suddenly loses consciousness and the worried Duke, crying out for her to come to her senses. Meanwhile, the doctor and Carlos enter the room, holding a stone in his hand and saying that it is a Sharon for Karina. And screaming, he says that there is no time to explain and quickly offers to give it to the girl. Million applied the stone to the girl's chest and saw that she turned a little red as the blood rushed in. Winston says that he wants to examine her. Carlos asks Million to leave because he has something to say. Leon tells Pharrell that this attack happened because of Gerda, and perhaps, as they know, a miracle comes with a price. Carlos says that, as expected, it took a lot of vitality to create Gerda for her. Hearing this, Lion screams and asks if they should kill this monster now. However, Ferial stops him and tells him to cool down, since this miracle has already happened and Gerda is out of Karina's control. A million people say that she is in so much pain, but they can't even do anything. However, Carlos objects and says that he thinks there is a way. Hearing this, Lion asks which one. The blonde guy replies that perhaps he has already noticed because her breathing has become calmer after the effect of the Sharon, and perhaps Karen will become a cure for the disease of art. Since that stone was missing while he was away, Ferriol examined it. After all, his miracle responded to him, as if they compensated for each other. Carlos talks about how he saw how Karina felt better, and it turns out that this was a reaction not only to his abilities, but also to what Fenn said. Gerda, created by Karina, ate her fellow tribesmen. The Duke does not understand whether Ferial wants to say that the monster ate not just the body of his fellow tribesmen, but also the Charon located inside him. The blonde guy says that he said everything correctly, since Charon could balance Karina's miracle, and therefore the monster got out of control. Lion says this is the first time his chatter has been helpful. Hearing this, Carlos says that this is chatter, so far only a hypothesis, but more Karens are needed to verify it. A million, ask how much more you need. Carlos answers as much as possible. The Duke thought that frosts would soon strike, and hungry monsters would come out of their shelters, and he thought about starting with Hertha's punitive campaigns. Leon says that they are so huge that their defenses must be of incredible size, and he will definitely finish them off and bring stones. And at that time, I thought about the girl for whom he would do anything. After Gerda's expected disappearance never materialized and her symptoms only worsened, the passage of time suddenly accelerated and brought them to winter. Karina thought that she was receiving unusual overprotection, and he still spends his days drawing. Vade Blagadaria, this made the main character's dreams less frightening. While drawing pictures, Devushka Uvidela Babochku, Kotaraya Ulatela, she thought about what she had promised Ferial, that she would not finish the work. However, the lady understood that there was nothing she could do, and thought that if this happened, let the grandmother fly away. When Karina opened the window, she saw many butterflies that spread their wings and flew away. When she saw this girl, she thought it was very beautiful, and I looked back and saw that there were no more butterflies left. Looking out the window, the girl saw Lion and thought that she had been noticed. She quickly closed the window. Karina thought that anger was definitely reflected on the guy's face, because she carelessly completed the painting and used the ability. The young lady does not understand what to do, and she is very worried. Suddenly, the girl heard a voice that said that he knew that the girl was there and offered to open the door. Million opens the door and asks the lady seriously if she did it. Karina explains that she didn't do it on purpose, 
because she was just carried away by the process. The Duke says that she knows what he worries about her. However, he does not understand how a girl becomes desperate if she does not hold a brush in her hand. After all, he's just trying to delay that moment at least a little, and that's why he asks the lady not to be excessive. Millian says that he wants to be with her as long as possible. At this time, Karina thought about it, because she doesn't understand why he is so caring. Sitting in the Duke's office, Carlos reports that the terrifying pain caused by the disease of art cannot be drowned out by any medicine. After all, evidence of this usually becomes a disease of illusion. Ferial reports that it is precisely because of this reason that there are no medications, capable of slowing down the speed of illness or quenching suffering. Million, hearing this, thought that the sleeping pills that Karina was taking had no effect, and he understands that there is no other way to relieve her torment. Carlos says that's what they said up until this point. After all, it was ironically noted that in the North, which was poor in artists, clues to the treatment of the disease of art were discovered. A blonde guy, but I'm not sure that Sharon can really become the basis for a cure for the disease of art. The Duke says that he hopes for his help, since from now on he is going to help as much as possible in research. Carlos says that he sees that his help is impressive and asks if he is worried about the lady. Million replies that he should not ask the obvious. However, Ferial, remembering, says that he only recently said how tired he was of his fiancée. The Duke replies that he simply doesn't like it when someone dies before his eyes. Million reflects that several days have already passed, and Gerda and the open Karina have not disappeared. However, it cannot be controlled. Leon doesn't understand whether he should be happy that Gerda obediently follows Karina's words. After all, the last time when the miracle of creating Gert was performed, Karina's eyes turned golden. However, this time there was no color change. After all, the situation when Gerda found and ate the Quran and how the monster follows Karina's words, one way or another, it all looks strange. Million thought that he could not be sure of anything, but she was so happy when he invited the lady to go to the nearest ball. The Duke understands that the first time her behavior was unexpected and therefore annoying. Because he thought that he had broken off the engagement, he would throw off a heavy burden. However, Million understands that at some point she began to make him worry. Since her gaze is always directed at the picture, and if he does not see it, then his mood worsens only from the thought that Karina is suffering somewhere. Million understands that every time he looks at the lady's face, he wants to kiss her. The Duke reflects that if they had spoken at his first meeting, things would have changed. After all, Karina and her current state would have become different. And what they are like now. The Duke and Karina went for a walk. When the lady saw the lake, she was surprised because it was real. Million asks her if she thought that he would bring the girl to the real lake. Karina, looking at the lake, says that it is very beautiful and funny because it is cold outside and there is not a speck of ice on the lake. The Duke says that this lake never freezes. However, it's not hot outside now, so you need to dress warmer. Million asks the lady if it bothers her that she doesn't draw. After all, the carriage contains prepared artistic instruments. The main character says that everything is fine because she wants to take a walk with him today. Lion asks if he should be glad that he is above drawing and is her priority. The girl agrees with him and asks if this is not an honor for him. The gentleman tells the lady that she really doesn't know anything about the North. The girl replies that she is ashamed and that she really is a big ignoramus. Lion asks about her not knowing the amazing Northern history. The lady wonders what the story is. Million explains that it is about a mountain range called the End of Winter. And if you go deep into the continent, moving away from the freezing sea, you can find a huge mountain range because there is no person who has been behind him and no one who would know where his end is. According to rare reports, beyond the ridge begins paradise or the devil's grounds. Others say that extinct dragons live there. There is very little information about such a rare beast as a dragon, and therefore these rumors about it are greatly exaggerated. Karina says, however, that the two are completely different theories, and if this place exists, then it must be very picturesque. Million reports that in reality there are only steep cliffs and in any case, the name End of Winter sounds very beautiful. The main character says that this is amazing, since winter is always followed by spring, and perhaps spring is just beyond the ridge. However, in the north, the end of winter symbolizes eternal doom. If even after winter has passed, the land remains empty, however, you can think about it in this light. Million says that he wants to look at the world through her eyes at least once. Having heard this, the girl replies that there is nothing interesting in this. However, the Duke says that even if this is so, 
He thinks that this view is beautiful. Karina says that she has a gift for the Duke. She gives him the drawing. And looking at it, the guy says that this is medicine, which will help him in case of injury and it will heal any wound. However, the medicine will not be able to resurrect a half-dead person or one whose body is torn into pieces. The surprised Duke asks if such a cure really exists. The lady replies that this is why she created it. Karina explains that she imagined that such a medicine would be beneficial because she created it. The girl explains that he won't actually be able to use it like that because she has to complete the drawing first, and then the medicine will become liquid. Lion reports that he does not need medicine that could cause her pain. He reminds the lady what he said earlier because he doesn't want her to suffer. The Duke says that he wishes the lady to smile as radiantly as she does now. Million says that in any case he will be grateful, but does not understand what difference it will make from him if it hurts her. Karina explains that she spends almost no energy on this medicine. Since she draws inanimate creatures, it doesn't waste much of her energy. Lion says that he is quite durable, even without the help of her powers. Karina says that she knows that he is strong. However, she would like to be prepared for any situation. The Duke says that such a cure could attract money-hungry people, and she must understand that she may be in danger if they find out that she can create it. The main character says that she is making it only for Lion. The guy says that he, of course, will keep it a secret. However, if rumors reach the soldiers, they will spread in the blink of an eye. Leon asks what she will do in this case and how she will act. Karina says that she didn't think about it at all, but if she says it, she's not scared at all when she's around him. And she wonders if the Duke will be angry because she understands that he is tired of her. Hearing this, Million asks why she thinks she is boring him. The lady talks about how she is a nuisance. The Duke says that she is not a burden to him, and he is not tired of her, and therefore can bother him as much as he wants, because he won't hate her. Million thought about how she had annoyed him in the beginning, and he didn't like taking care of people. However, the guy understands that he is interested in what Karina likes and what makes her happy. And when she is not next to him, he thinks about whether she is suffering somewhere. Lion thinks that he is amazed that someone can make him worry so much, and it seems to him that now he almost understands that he can no longer deny it. The Duke asks Karina if she likes him. The main character replies that this is impossible, and there was never a moment when she didn't like him. Hearing this, the Duke thought that this was happiness, and suddenly a butterfly flew up to them. The guy says that there are especially a lot of butterflies in these places, and it's really very beautiful, because he's glad that the lady likes it. Karina says that if they come here again, she would like to sketch it. The Duke replies that they will definitely come here again. The young lady asks Ferial if it is true that he is not going to the ball. The blonde guy replies that everything is fine, since he can attend the ball next time. After all, he wants to show her work to the world as quickly as possible. Carlos says that if her name becomes widely known in the capital, then even after starting to act, there will be a lot of things to do now. Karina says that she is really grateful to him, and he says that through this door, you can get to the deserted street of the capital. Hearing this, the guy says that he has already gone and offers to have fun at the ball instead of him. At this time, the girl thought that she felt almost nothing, and because no matter what force she used, it did not cause strong sensations. Karina thinks that when she was younger, when a miracle was created, she immediately felt a response, and she doesn't like that her feelings are gradually dulling. The main character understands that she drew to forget her sorrows, and that's why I couldn't imagine that there was a ban in creativity. The girl thought that she still had time, and she could still draw and look forward to today's ball. Suddenly, the girl felt tired in her hand, and the brush slipped from her fingers, and she thought that she had a strange sensation in her hand. Leaving drawing, the girl thought that she first needed to prepare for the ball. The main character thought that everything would be fine, since she still had four months left so that nothing would happen right now. Walking up the stairs, Karina felt a loss of strength and thought that her cycles were decreasing, and maybe she would feel better if she drew. After all, earlier, during attacks, the pain went away, and if the girl performed a miracle, it was as if she had paid with her life for the painkiller. Suddenly the lady saw Million and asks what he is doing here. The surprised Duke asks if she is having a seizure. However, looking at the girl, he says that she doesn't have to tell him anything, and he picked her up and carried her to her room. Karina apologizes because she was thinking about what she could endure. Leon invites her not to apologize because it hurts him that she hides her suffering. The Duke reports that she can be honest around him. He puts his hand to her head. However, the main character does not understand how he so easily understood that the members of her family did not realize, although she spent 20 years with them. 
Lion asks if he should call Winston and wonders if she is in much pain. The guy hugs the girl and tells her not to cry. Karina says that she is fine. Million says that even if she said this before, she may not hold back in front of him. Hearing this, the girl thanked him, because there is nothing complicated about it. And I thought about what if she weren't sick? If only he were as sensitive. The main character thinks about what if they had gotten married as planned and lived like an ordinary married couple. And this thought actually made her feel a little better. Karina says that today is a ball, and she asks how he will go in such clothes. Million says that everything is normal, since clothes can be changed. And she says that today is the eve of the ball and she can rest. Was surprised when she heard this, and the Duke explains to her that such a culture exists only in the North, because the day before the ball people meet in an informal setting and have a drink. The young lady thought that even now he was explaining things unknown to her because he cared about her. The main character thought that if she were healthy, she thought that this was a pipe dream of past days. Leon reports that he will also make small changes and will return while she rests. Karina thought that if she were healthy, he would look at her not with sympathy, but with love. Lady realizes that she still yearns for something and has not fully dealt with her regrets. The girl thought that she did not need to be mistaken. After all, Million only cares about her because she is sick. Fen greets the lady, but Lion explains that the lady is ill and therefore is resting today. The eve today and move the ball to tomorrow. Hearing this, the servant was surprised because he had never heard of such a word. However, the Duke explains to him that he told his guests to drink and do what they want, since the ball is postponed to tomorrow anyway. Fen thought that the aristocrats would be against it, and he doesn't understand what to do. The butler informs the guests that for this reason the gentleman will not be able to attend today, and therefore the planned appointment is postponed until tomorrow. However, today they can drink wine and have a good time. Baron Krembo says that they have all gathered here today, and, screaming, asks why he brings them such unexpected news. A woman with red hair reports that the Duke constantly asks for the banquet to end early. Hearing this, the Baron asks if the Viscountess is of the same opinion as him. As a result, the woman reports that the Duke is such a person and it's boring to be with him. Count Leonhardt holds a glass of wine in his hand and says that he was told not to rush, and this means that the military meetings are postponed until tomorrow, and he thinks that today he can drink a lot. However, Viscountess Ariel Gavoret Otom does not like to drink, and Archduke Festilio postpones the banquet for the first time in his life, and she thinks that he is hiding something valuable. Leon, coming to Karina's room, asks how she feels. The girl replies that she feels better and apologizes for making him worry. Million says what he's glad to hear and asks if he can sit next to her. The girl agrees. The Duke says that he decided that he would give all the Sharons found in this punitive campaign to her, and that's exactly what he's going to say to today's guests. The Duke invites the lady to be patient a little. However, the main character wonders why he is so kind to her. Million explains that he just wants the lady to be safe. However, of course, that's not all, because next year and the year after that, he wants to see her paint pictures without a care in the world. Karina thought that she was unable to make a promise, and that made her feel pain. The girl understands that this is impossible and says that she has a request to the Duke. Hearing this, the guy became interested. Karina asks if she can go hiking with him. However, the Duke was very surprised, since the punitive campaign and return home would take one or even two months. The main character thought that this was almost all the remaining time that she could spend with her loved one. The girl says that she will not interfere and will stay behind. However, Lion objects and says that it is too dangerous, and if she wants to travel, then they cannot do it after completing the punitive campaign. Because in the place where they are going, it is impossible to ensure even the safety of the knights. The lady says it's okay because she wants to be with him as long as possible. And at that time, she realized that she had said something wrong. However, Karina explains that she is bored spending every day at home. After all, it will be even worse for one. She says that she can also help at least a little. The Duke says that her help is already enough because she says so. Million says that first, if she feels good, then it's time for her to go to bed. However, the girl holds him by the hand and says that at least a little, she is sorry. Leon says that she excites him and he kisses her. At this time, the girl thought that this was embarrassing her, but she kissed Million back. Karina wonders if he likes her even a little. Or is it just ordinary sympathy? She thought about what she liked, how he responded to her touch and his warmth when he stroked her hair. The main character understood that until now she had been too trusting. After all, Million is also a person. 
However, she does not understand whether it was sympathy or love. After all, this is not important for Karina, since the Duke is a caring person, and there is not an ounce of lies in her words. The girl thinks that he cannot feel something special for her. This is only because of the sympathy that a dying person feels. Suddenly, Lion asks what she just said. The girl explains that this is the first time she has been consoled like this, but this made her feel better. The Duke explains that it was an impulsive act, because for the first time he noticed how he had lost his mind, and the annoying enemy, about whom he had to take care, for a moment penetrated his soul. Leon thinks that one day he became accustomed to involuntarily running his hands, in her hair, and he got used to being with her. However, the usual one is not affectionate and attentive enough to kiss for consolation. Million, so he thought that she understood everything, because he calmed her down. He suggests to the girl, so be it if it's easier for her. Lion says he is well aware of her lack of acting talent, because now she looks like an abandoned puppy. Karina says it's time for her to sleep because she's tired, and the Duke agrees with her, since she needs to rest after today. He says that if she becomes ill, she can call him at any time. Left alone in the room, the main character thought that he wasn't even angry, and it would be better if he lost his temper. Then she would recognize the lie and be able to move on. The girl thought about what she didn't like, but if she didn't stop being so selfish, she would hurt Million. Karina thought about being afraid of the inevitable moment when one of them would definitely get hurt. She thought that she really liked the guy. Sitting at breakfast, the girl thought about whether he was doing nothing, but she felt a little uncomfortable. Suddenly, Lion says that if she wants, she can go on a punitive campaign with him. However, in return, she must promise to stay safe. The Duke says that she has Gerda, and therefore there is no need for protection. Karina asks if she needs to make more of this healing potion, so that it would be enough for him and the other knights. However, Million asks her if she thinks he will give permission for this. The Duke says that he thinks it would be better for her not to use her life in exchange for miracles. Hearing this, Karina thought about what he had learned about her situation, and about her limited time. Million reports that he knows everything that she discussed with Ferial, because he said she should be careful, and since her life as a creator may end. Hearing this, Karina thought that he had changed the information about their part. The main character reports that she understands, because he gets upset if someone dies. The Duke replies that he will not deny it, but... The girl continues, saying that she wanted to help him, because he is her benefactor. Lion reports that she is also one of them, and he will be upset if she dies, and so he asks her not to die. Karina understands that the request not to die is what she always wanted to hear. Odnako ne usli shav e in reality. She doesn't understand why she's so depressed, and there's a lump in her chest. Million says that after surviving the punitive campaign, you can see spring. The main character thought that she would leave this place when spring came, but at that time, the Duke announced that when spring came, he would take her to the waterfall. The girl thought that it was difficult to imagine when she only saw the northern winter, because in fact, it would be very beautiful, because she had never seen the waterfall in person.